And now, introducing the the owner of a broken heart after Custer laid an egg, finishing 10 spots out of putting Glenn in the money at the Daytona 500. When Reese for comment, he said, NASCAR, more like ass car, am I right? He is Glenn Clark. I didn't watch the race, of course, because, you know, I, I don't watch races, but I did. Like, I was actually feverishly, as I was getting ready for the Loyola game last night, I'm like, how's my guy doing? How's Cole Custer? And it was it didn't look good. And I said, well, eh, there goes that. There goes me trying to give any betting advice about NASCAR ever again in the future. What? What's the problem? We have the wrong mic covers again. Oh, we got to do that. We, we got to look into that. Here we go. You're fine. Coach Francis is here. We'll talk about him in one second. Good morning. It's Glenn Clark Radio. I'm Glenn. He's Paul. And I'm. Uh, we've been waiting to do this for a while. He's had the uh, the disrespect of having to go to work and teach and all of those things. Um, I've known this man for a long time. Uh, of course, you guys know one of my best friends on the planet is uh, his son, AJ. Uh, he, of course, is the football coach at Mead. He's been the basketball coach. This man has done just about everything. He's got his own podcast now, the I Coaches Podcast. He's Coach Mike Francis, and he's with us in the studio this morning. It's great to see you, dude. It's good. To, I really am glad we were able to make this work. Yeah, me too. Thank you. It's been a long time coming, but you know, you don't get many days off when you're teaching. It's the whole. The, you, you. How long? Okay. How long have you been in coaching? Uh, since 1987. Holy smokes, my, man! My first year out of high school, I read an article in the uh, Capital Gazette, and they weren't going to have a team for kids in the community unless they found a coach. Uh, I lied about my age. <laughs> I told him I was 18 and I wasn't. And How old were you? I was 17. I turned okay, 18. Okay, all right, all right. I mean, come, the on. Season, but, come on. You know, I, I gave him like a two month lie <laughs> and got the job. And then uh, ever since then, it's always been about, you know, helping the community and the kids in the community like me. And how long have you been co uh, teaching? I've been teaching. I've been in a classroom for, since 2014. Okay. 2014. Cool. I, I, I've, I've heard you talk about how much that part of it meant to you. It's funny, right? I, uh, Gary Neal came back to town. Yes. Right? Yes. To, to be the Calvert Hall coach. And he had been an assistant at Towson. And I was talking to him about the Calvert Hall thing. And he said, dude, it's because I wanted to teach. Yes. That's what I wanted to do. Like, the basketball side of it, that's cool. I wanted this job because I really wanted to teach, and that wasn't going to be an option at the college level because you know you got to yeah. you got to do a few more things in yes. order to get to that point. This was my chance to do it, and it really blew me away. You was, was it a, a thing where you wanted to teach, or in order to get a certain job, you're going to have to teach? Like, what was that part of it for you? Well, first of all, there's no great coaches who aren't great teachers. It's just what subject you're teaching, yep. and if you take the same approach with any subject in any curriculum you're going to be a good teacher because it's all about relationships and getting people to understand what you're trying to get across. Uh, I wanted to teach because uh, I saw a need for students who uh, were coming from the same community I came from or a similar community, but they didn't have the relationships. You know, as a, a famous person once said, nothing great is learned without building a relationship. Mm. If you look it up, I think it was Mr. Einstein who said that. Um, so if you don't have that relationship with students, then they won't learn. And there's not enough people, and we know that as it is, there's not enough people who are building those relationships to see past the classroom. Like, I'm, I'm fully committed in my community, which you know. No, you know I have the Father's Day picnic, which is on year 13 right now, because I grew up in a neighborhood there was no fathers. Yep. Like, there was 80% single family, single parent family, single moms. So... We get together now to celebrate the fathers that we are. We bring our kids together and understand, you know, my paper in college was on statistics of fatherless homes. Mm. So I felt like in order for my kids to receive rewards and be able to um, obtain things that I had to be a, a good father. And I chose being a father over anything else at first. That was my number one job. Well, you know, but what have your kids turned out to do anyway? I mean, like, jeez, uh, <laughs> you know, a couple of, of real failures, if you ask me, <laughs> particularly the older one. I mean, the younger one, she's all right. Yeah. The older one, really, that guy's done nothing, man. Yeah, and was, like, what a bum. He was committed. He was very committed, and it's never too early to be committed. For instance, he... He lost the seventh grade president. Uh, they had, you know, he went for seventh grade class president, and he lost. And he said, "That's okay, Dad. I'm gonna be the first African American lieutenant governor or, <laughs> or governor of the state of Maryland." That was seventh grade. 
So, and if you see, he studied politics in Maryland, oh. but, you know, it just... Got his master's, yes, the whole thing. Yes, three like, and a half years, he graduated in undergrad, got his master's before he left. He walked off to the stage and looked at me and said, that's for you. Yep. I'm never going to school again. Yep. <laughs> no, I mean, I don't blame him. By the way, you go to that much school, I don't blame you. You're good, right? <laughs> and like, yeah. you're good. Yeah. Um, AJ, for those that don't know, of course, played uh, a few years, five years in the NFL. Yeah. Um, ended up in the WWE, yeah. a TV show in A and E. He's a rapper. He's he's he's. I hate how many skills he has. But he's doing everything I wanted to do. That's the thing people don't understand. He done everything. See, when I where I grew up, it wasn't cool to be in drama club. I wanted to be in drama club, but mm. I couldn't come home and mm. be in drama club. I'm mm. be honest. With you can you. get your ass kicked. Yeah, You're gonna get right. You know what I mean, we bullied the kid who played soccer in my neighborhood. <laughs> I'm trying to find out who he was the only kid to ever play soccer. Seriously, we didn't even know what soccer was. By the way, AJ just won a world championship playing video game right, soccer. Exactly. <laughs> so I'm looking for that guy now to apologize that now I'm more yeah, I'm right? educated and I'm, you know, smarter than what I was. Darius, if I ever see you again, if you ever hear this, Darius, I want to apologize to you for the way we behaved and our ignorance. <laughs> Coming up in a community where peer pressure took the best of us. Man, man, look at you being the big man. Hey. Look at you being the big man all these years later. Yeah. Uh, the Francis Sports Academy has also done incredible work. Yes. Um, I've been uh, partnered up with you guys for a long time with the annual uh, food drive down in College Park. Yes. And what you guys do for Sarah's House, which yes. is absolutely incredible. A wonderful charity right there at Fort Meade. Um, and and I, it's meant the world to me. My, my son has now gotten involved. We just go literally clean out the grocery stores of ramen noodles <laughs> every year and come I, it's it, it's such a hilarious bit because i'll roll up to the arena with like i mean a car full of ramen noodles mm -hmm. and just stacks upon stacks and all i'm worried about is like we got a bunch of college kids around here right i gotta keep my eye on these yeah. <laughs> because they're not gonna end up at sarah's house that's a meal Right, exactly <laughs> right, man. It's a meal. You know, if it's being in college, you're dying for some more ramen noodles. Yes, you man. are. That's a good meal for a college student. And we've been fortunate to have the help of the Anne Arundel County Police yep. Department, uh, along with uh, Mike Rogers, who's our representative, and and people in the community, Katrina Heberin, uh, William, uh, uh, Junior Jones, Victor Wright. Uh, those people have all been big contributors for us. I'm sure, I'm, I'm hope I'm not, you know, don't blame it on me forgetting you. It's just the memory ain't what it used to be. <laughs> but we had a lot of people. We do a lot of things together. They're also yep. with us with the Father's Day. And uh, we just see, our, we want our community to be better. That's it. We want our kids to get opportunities. I think opportunity is the biggest word in the dictionary, not by letters, just opportunities and, and that's what we want to try to create all right so that I, I i respect you know how much i respect everything you guys yes. are doing you know how much it means to me to be a part of it and so uh may it continue and i always get a request from me I, I typically throw a party every summer he always requests it's father's day weekend because he's coming up anyway <laughs> exactly. it was real weird last year he's like bro i need you to throw your party on june 19th and i looked at him like bro am i allowed to throw a juneteenth party like i don't know <laughs> I just don't know how the world works, man. Like, yeah. I'm still trying to figure it out. Like, am I allowed to do that? He's like, yeah, bro. Like, yeah. It's the okay. Thing, my mother's birthday is June I, 19th. In fact, I know he told you that. You know, it's funny because he's, by the way, he always like, that's how black my grandma is. <laughs> <laughs> she was born on Juneteenth. Uh, um, but he, he was like, I'm going to bring her. I'm going to bring her. I'm like, bro, bring her. By all means, bring her out. We'll throw a party. It's not going to be Juneteenth this year. <laughs> Jay, I'm sorry. It's just not going to work out that way yes um all right so it's good to have uh, coach francis here we got a lot to get into today coming up later on in the program uh, obviously the big topic today juan howard we're going to talk about it uh we still got a lot to talk about the maryland job and coach is going to talk about a lot of that with us too uh former georgia tech coach bobby Cremens now with the espnu radio he's going to check in with us a little bit later on this hour we'll get his thoughts on it and our buddy Rob Long is going to join us a little bit later on hey. this morning as well. I know that's your guy. Hey. Normally, Jeremy joins us every Monday at 1130, but Jeremy is doing uh, national radio today because it's the holiday. Mm. So uh, Rob's going to sort of fill in for him for a normal segment this morning. That's cool because I know you guys are boys. And he's got a game that the, the IAM yeah, the quarterfinals, I believe, yeah. are today. Yes, sir. So uh, Mount Carmel, I think, plays John Carroll at 4 okay. o'clock. So. Uh, he's going to check in before that. So that's all coming up on the program today. Today's show is brought to you by the CIAA Tournament. You going to be able to get to any of that this week, man? I'm hoping. I've gotten so many calls from the coaches trying to find gyms to practice. Oh, no I doubt, right? Six schools called me, but we couldn't help them because we're still playing. Well, that's a good problem to have, <laughs> yeah, obviously. <exactly. laughs> um, this is going to be an unbelievable event. It gets underway tomorrow night. or Actually, tomorrow 
during the day, mm-hmm. it gets underway at Royal Farms Arena. You can still get tickets, CIAA tournament.org. That's CIAA tournament.org in order to get your tickets. It's not just the basketball. The basketball is a huge part of it, but like they're taking over Rams Head Live this week. By the way, is DJ Cool going to uh, join us tomorrow? Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm talking to him today. Oh, boy. Uh, I'm he, really. He, he told me Tuesday should work. Bro, I'm really today. excited about that. I am Ooh. really yeah. excited about that. Uh, DJ Jazzy Jeff's coming into town this week. It's I think Rakim's coming in. Like, there's just going to be a massive party surrounding the CIAA tournament. Again, CIAA tournament.org in order to get your tickets. It all gets underway tomorrow. All right. Let's, uh, let's, uh, let's do it. Let's talk about it. We all saw it. <laughs> It wasn't good. No. I know that much. Look, and I say this as someone, uh, let's get it all out on the table, right? Yes. I have no predisposition whatsoever towards Michigan, towards Juwan Howard, towards Wisconsin, towards Greg Gard. Uh, I know there's a lot of Maryland fans that were pissed off about Juwan Howard because he got into a fight with Mark Turgeon last season, but also a lot of Maryland fans don't like Mark Turgeon. So, like, you know, I'm not really even sure how much there was that was like, let's support our guy. Yes. Um... I have no predisposition whatsoever towards any of these people or parties involved with what happened yesterday. I wasn't watching the game either, right? I was getting ready. I had to work the Loyola game last night. So, you know, that was where my focus was. A great win for Loyola, by the way. They spanked. I mean, just spanked Lehigh by 27 points on senior night. It was a great atmosphere. Santi Aldama was back. That was very cool. Um, so, so i not watching this, and I'm only watching it via Twitter, mm-hmm. essentially, right? Like, and I start to see Twitter – explode and the beauty of one of these events for us that do this for a living is there are no shortage of things that can be said about it right because there's there's not necessarily a definitive right and a definitive wrong outside of i think we all agree no matter what happens if you're a coach you probably shouldn't be slapping somebody right like you i'll agree on that we we can all agree yes that it Awful things can occur. There's got to be a line. But much like I remember coming in here the morning. You remember the thing with Miles Garrett and Mason Rudolph last yes, season? Yes. I remember coming in here the next morning and saying, look, I, I will never defend what Miles Garrett did. Never in a million years. It's completely and totally unacceptable. But I have to believe something occurred that led to that. Mm-hmm. I ha- it doesn't make it okay. It doesn't make it so he doesn't get a serious suspension. Mm-hmm. It doesn't make any of those things. I just got to believe there's more to the story than just dude lost his mind in a moment and started bashing somebody with a helmet, right? Like, I've got to believe something else occurred in that moment. That's what I'm struggling with here. And I know you've uh, been doing, like, the Zapruder film over on <laughs> social media, going frame by frame. It was the grassy <laughs> note. <laughs> yeah, no, 100%. Just... Like, I have seen yeah. your, your social media breakdowns of yeah. what occurred yesterday. I have, I have watched this 100 times. Here's the only issue I have. The only issue I have is when Jawan Howard was asked about it afterwards, he was still going on about the timeout. Yeah. And if, if something had been said... That had been wildly inappropriate, right? Like I, to Miles Garrett came out and said, "I heard somebody say this." Mm-hmm. Mason Rudolph, of course, denied it, and there was a back and forth from there. But at least he said it, which gave us more context to like, okay, if you really heard that, I can see where you would lose your mind. I can see where you would stop thinking clearly in that moment. And you again, I'm not trying to compare Jawan Howard with a slap to Miles Garrett bashing somebody over the head with a helmet. Yes. There's clearly a far more aggressive uh, a crime that we're talking about here. But at least I can get it. When Jawan Howard was asked about it, he was still going on about the timeout. And I personally have no sympathy for the timeout. None. Jawan Howard took a timeout when he was blowing out Purdue uh, just a week right. ago at the end of the game. Like... Dude, this is basketball. I, come on, man. I get it. You don't like it. You're smarting about it, the whole deal. But that if that's really what sets you off, I think you're in the wrong business. Mm. Like, I, I really do. I don't think emotionally you can handle this because stuff like that is going to happen when you play basketball. As everybody pointed out, you know, you, you're, still, you're still trying. You're still putting your guys out there, pressing, trying to play in that point. The other dude's got the right to say, let me coach up my guys to put them in the best situation for facing that, right? Mm-hmm. Like, the timeout, I, I'm just – it's hard for me to have any sympathy. I'll let you explain why I might be wrong about that no, from a coach's perspective. But from my perspective, dude, this is part of the game. 
It's part of the game. You're going to get your ass kicked sometimes. Yes. You're going to kick somebody else's ass sometimes. I know you guys had a tough season in football this yes, year. You got did. your ass kicked a couple of times. Several times. Right? Like, Several times. It's, it's part of the business. Yes. Right? You can't just lose your mind because you're getting your ass kicked. Like, it's... you. That's going to come if you get into this business. You're going to have to deal with getting your ass kicked sometimes. Mm -hmm. So you get your ass kicked. They call a timeout. Still being pissed off about that. I, I, I just, I can't. I can't embrace that in any way. I have no sympathy, no support. Did something else happen in that exchange? Totally possible. But he didn't say anything about that after the game. He was still going on about the timeout. And that, to me, is the, the worst part about all of this, which is, Dude, if you really lost your mind over a timeout, I, I don't know, bro. I don't know if this is the, the 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 path in life for you. I think I think all of it is a thread of protecting his players. I think as coaches, that's our number one thing. We're supposed to protect our players. And uh, as you said, I've lost about 70. I've won 76 to nothing, lost 70 to nothing. I've lost – uh, basketball game by 102. Like, Did you really? Yeah, we got beat by Savannah Park when I was like 11 years old. We were playing up, but they beat us 108 to 6. Oh, my God. You know, and we shook hands. But I took it as it was, and I worked hard to be better. And and the thing is, if you're so upset as a coach, me being a coach, I'm never going to get mad because he called a timeout. I mean, even this year we had a coach who didn't shake our hand. Because we had a timeout because we was trying to get our bench guys in. Mm -hmm. And we asked the officials to roll it, you know, so you can get your subs in. And the officials were like, no, you called it, you taking it. But we didn't want it. We just wanted to get guys right. in. Right. So at the end of the game, we're in the line. And the coach, he put his fist out like that. And then pulled his fist away and gave me a little, you know, couple choice words. Over it. Yeah. I can't yeah, fathom like, being that it, fragile, it, dude. It happens. It happens. I'm not going to. Guys get caught up, and it's emotional. And honestly, you you are looking out for the best interests of your players. You are looking out. Now, I think something was said, and I think Juwan was upset because of the timeout, because the way it made maybe his players felt. Mm -hmm. And he's the leader of. His and by players. the way, he said that's essentially what he said afterwards. Right. He was like, "My my guys didn't deserve that." And right. again, I I hear you, but you got to answer to the fact that you took a timeout a week ago against yeah. Purdue. When you were kicking right. their ass, I agree. And I would have told my players who were upset, right. y'all should have did something during the clock. See, that's what I tell kids. Like, don't get mad because they beat you by 30 or 40. Your ass should be mad when the game's going on and play some damn defense. Right. <laughs> like, don't get mad at right. the result. Right. Be, be mad at the process. Let's change the process. We can change the outcome by our actions during the game. Let's defend. Let's rebound. Let's not turn it over. All right? Let's tackle. Let's block. Let's hold on to the ball. Whatever it may be. But I can't get mad at the other coach. You know, Billy Tubbs said a long time ago, it's not my job to keep the score down. Right. I can't coach your team. Right. I can only coach mine. Yep. You know? So so I believe he was acting out for his kids, but then the coach from Wisconsin, the assistant who came in, felt like he was protecting his head coach. All right? The kid from Michigan may have said something, because if you look, him and the assistant are face-to-face, -face, and they're not just staring each other down. There's lips moving. So Jawan probably heard what the coach's response was, which I blame the Michigan kid if he said something. Mm -hmm. But Jawan's not going to say what his kid said right. because he's got to protect his kid. Right. So in the press conference, he's going to say, hey, I was mad at the timeout, whatever, whatever, you know. But he's going to protect his kid from the beginning. Now, would I have acted that way? No. But I also wouldn't have put my hands on him. So a lot has been made about that, right, with yeah. Greg Gard, who's the Wisconsin yeah. coach, sort of. Grabbing the, the thing too again is I'm taking a lot of this from the the explanations that were given yeah. right and and again to your point certainly if if your one of your players said something out of line you're yes. not going to undress them you're not going to do that. Right. Greg Gard saying look he was pissed off I just wanted to try to explain to my, myself That's I not the time. I just wanted to say look this is what happened in that moment. That's not the time because that coach who didn't shake my hand when we beat them early this year. He sent me a text this morning. Really? Saying he was, hey, look, look, the internet's undefeated. And it was about that situation. You know what I mean? Like, he texted me about that situation. And we're good friends, but he just got into his, you know, he was a little upset the way things going. But we weren't purposely trying to embarrass them. Like, it's not the case. We wanted to get our kids in the game. But some people get caught up, and I know I have in the past. I've got caught up in emotions when you're in the game. Basketball is a very, very emotional game. Unlike football, football is emotional, but basketball is indoors. It's full of people. It's high risk, yep. high reward. Mm -hmm. And I think Juwan maybe just felt the pressure and, and, and expected better from his guys. And then 
he responded to what the coach was doing. But at, at all costs, if I'm the leader of my program, don't put your hands on me and stop me from walking off in front of my kids. Because now my kids are going to look at me like, damn, he just got big brothers, or damn, he just sunned them, because that's the way kids are. So, so Jawan's like, whoa, 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 I don't want to talk about it right now. You know, that's what I would have done. I wouldn't have talked about it. I wouldn't have said anything. But I definitely wouldn't let you grab me. Do you, do you make anything of this following up the stuff with Turgeon from a year ago? Do you make anything nah, of there being a, a track record at all? I hate that. It's two separate situations. And the way people respond, if you look, I tweeted Jay Billis and I tweeted Rex Chapman this morning because I didn't like their response to it. And I respect both of them a lot. Like Jay Billis, I, I know he doesn't know me and he probably doesn't give a you-know-what. But I respect him for what he does with the. By the NCAA. way, Jay and I have gotten to legitimate fights okay. on this show before, okay. and yet, and yet, he'll still come on. Right. He'll still, and right. I do respect that about Jay yeah. Billis, is despite the fact that like he and I went really back. He's a very much a Mark Turgeon supporter. He's a, right. and I'm not even a Mark Turgeon hater in any Me way. Neither. I I just would legitimately ask Jay, what's reasonable to expect from this program? Mm -hmm. Like what what legitimately should they have been accomplishing in ten years? And he didn't like being put on the spot that way because it felt like he had to attack his his guy. Mark yeah. Turgeon was well, his guy. I never had anything against Coach Turgeon. I think he was a, a good guy. Um, I kind of distanced. Like, I wasn't as close. When Beano left, I was not as close to the Maryland program as I had been in the past. Uh, and and I never had anything against Coach Turgeon. Mm -hmm. I, I thought he was, you know, he's working hard. He's doing his job. I know the fans may have gotten a little bit out of control and over the top on their expectations. Sometimes things just don't go as planned. You go out and you recruit kids, you bring kids in, and sometimes maybe the chemistry isn't right or sometimes the ball doesn't bounce your way or sometimes you didn't get the kids you wanted and you have to get someone else because you have to fill your roster. See, all of that and any of that could have been the issue, but it didn't. I mean, Coach Turgeon didn't lack, like, the fire to coach. Coach Turgeon didn't lack – wanting to be there like mm -hmm. he, he didn't wake up and say hey i want to lose i want to be the worst team right in, right in the big 10 like he didn't say it was never embarrassing no, there was never anything no. embarrassing about this program no, like I, I guess he just got tired of, sometimes you get tired of you know right. everything like in your family has to, people don't understand i mean you are familiar with my situation your family hears things more than anything oh no doubt you know and i have to you know and then my brothers, sisters, people calling me, hey, this is what I heard today, or this is where I've been today, and such and such, did you hear this? I'm like, don't send it to me because you know the truth. I, I stand mm -hmm. behind my truth, mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm happy about everything I've done, win or lose, because some kid benefited at some point. That's what it's all about. And if, if Turgeon leaving and that situation with him and Turgeon has nothing to do with this situation. Because in the way they're responding, I don't like it. Because you say certain things about certain people. Did they say that when Bobby Knight threw a chair? I mean, I don't, I don't know That's for what, what it's worth. Right, I don't but know. But then you hear about but him or you hear about there's no question. It was Kimmy English. The, the mm -hmm. man said, oh, mm -hmm. we're threatened for our life. Like, how do you – you threaten for your life? Right. Really? As a commentator? Why would you put that on him? Right. Jimmy's right. a great kid. Oh, one of the, I, one sorry, of the most I, remarkable human beings hate, I've ever known. Yeah. I hate saying kid, but they I remember. Yeah, I get it. I get I, mean? I get it. And by the way, he's still a very young man. Kyle Kyle Anderson, who plays with the Memphis Girls. I still call him Lil Kyle. Okay. Like, but it's and it's like hard for me. He's like, Yeah, you know you know me. But, <laughs> but and it's hard because I you know, I call him unfortunately like that. And and you don't you can't be in that situation where people say certain things. You know, words are powerful, and how you respond to them and what you say could really change someone's life. And I think that what some people are saying may be a little over the top about this situation. Now, and nobody talking about what the coach did after when he did the DMX generation. You remember yeah, the, the, DMX? the DX, the chop, yeah. yeah, yeah I, nobody right. said that. Yeah, that, that was, un, I mean, like way over the top, yeah, just no way over the said, top. And I'm not condoning, and again, I'm not condoning what Jawan Howard did. I'm not. So I'm okay with it's it's not an excuse, it's an explanation. Yes. I'm 100% okay with that. The the issue I had yesterday was the who started it stuff. Like that to yeah, me, yeah. that's what a 5-year-old, you know, like when I True. when I walk in and I see my my 7-year-old punch my 4-year-old son, mm -hmm. I'll be like, "Dude, what the f did you just do?" And his answer, "Well, he started it." No, like I, I don't need yeah. any of that, no right? Like there's none of that. I have no problem with Let's talk about what happened, and let's talk about what other things went wrong during this process. Mm -hmm. But to your point, at the end of the day, you're still the guy that ended up trying to slap somebody. You're mm -hmm. still the guy. And there's going to have to be 
it, it's been way over the top. So, you know, calling for somebody to lose their – stop, stop. Come, yeah, that's get, the get thing. Get the F out of oh, here. He's, he's embarrassing. He's doing this. He's doing – like, come on now. Let's – uh Anybody say anything that was the Duke announcer scared when Bayheim went nuts on the sideline? Right, right. I mean, come on. I'm, Set, I'm, settle down. I'm, settle down. I'm, yeah, by the way, you ever watch Gary Williams coach? I you ever you ever watch yeah, I mean, you ever watch that man lose his mind? Suits, he's uh-huh. and, and screaming. And yeah. literally screaming. Now that was the great relationship that he had with it's funny because he's on the cover of our, our print issue. <laughs> we're celebrating <laughs> we're celebrating the twentieth anniversary of the national championship. Yes. But like, you know, it was just a different scenario where he would undress and scream at guys and Juan Dixon would say, F you right back. Like yeah. he just had a different relationship with a, his with his players, where they would do that. Right? A great relationship, and some of the greatest relationships is people looking. Oh man, why do y'all argue so much? I had a point guard, same as a leader on a team, and people, like, man, why are y'all arguing? And I, I said, we're not arguing. We're communicating. You know what I mean? Like this is what we do. And right. That's, that's this how, how we, it works for us. He, yeah. We won three straight county championships <laughs> because he was the point guard, and his passion and my passion was the same level. It's just we thought differently about some things, but we never, ever put anything uh, but the team first when we did it. You know, so uh, Avion Robinson, he's over at CCBC Dundalk now. Okay. And, uh, you know, he's he him and I have had plenty of those, Juan and uh, uh, Coach Talks. That's just the way it is. This, that's the relationship. Yes. That's so are you guys saying that he shouldn't be fired? Oh, absolutely or, not fired. Not I, fired. I, I, just, I, I feel like maybe maybe not fired. I, I, I'm honestly, uh, like – Personally, if Jawan Howard gets suspended or fired, I don't really care. Mm-hmm. But you have a bunch. This was on television. Yep. This was in front of. The oh, it's, a, it's a horrible look. And, There's no question about this that. This is a guy, and whether you want, whether you like the fact that it's getting linked to the whole Mark Turgeon thing a year ago or not, he still did that too. And then he goes and slaps another coach. I don't know how you can ha- you can continue on with a guy who's that hot-headed and he put his hands on another human being. I, I don't know how you can do that. Be- because you can – There's uh, for I, look, I, he's going to get suspended mm-hmm. for probably the rest of this season. If Minimal. I had, yeah, if I had to guess. It'll Minimal. be the rest of this season, to your point, maybe in two. And in- inevitably, for the sake of this, they're going to say you're going to have to go to anger management. You're going to have to – like j- for the sake of what you're talking about, which is how do you do this, how do you move this forward, they're going to turn around to their boosters and say – Look, if you think this is a bad look, we're addressing it. We're doing that. And now that'll be up to Juwan Howard because Juwan Howard has the right to make his own decision then. If if he d- feels like he's being undressed and he's being embarrassed and he's being whatever, then he has the right to say, I don't want to do that. And I'm going to choose not to be the coach any longer here. If that's if you're going to force me to do things that I don't think I don't think I have this problem, you forcing me to do it, I'm, I'll pass. I'm good. I don't need to be the coach that bad. That's his right. You know, I don't think Juwan Howard desperately needs the money. I think he's done quite well for himself. If I had to guess, he made plenty of years, forty to fifty million dollars at least. In the actually, he probably got one big contract in there he too. Got it might one. be he got one in Washington. Yeah, yeah, it might be even more than that yeah. that he made during his NBA. I don't think he needs this job necessarily, so he might on his own decide he's going to walk away. If the people at Michigan have other questions about Juwan Howard, like let I me, mean, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think of an example of this. Juwan Howard looks like he's been a pretty good coach so far, so they'd be inclined to want to keep. I know it's been up and down this season, but he had a great season last year. I think they're inclined to want Jawan Howard around. There are coaches throughout every sport that if they did this, the school would absolutely use it as a way to say, yeah, we kind of didn't know if we wanted you around any, anyway, so this is a really convenient way for us to to, to move on. Mm-hmm. But I, I think, to, to Coach's point, it's a, it's a significant suspension. At least. Um, that they the school gets out in front of. They don't wait for the Big Ten. They say we're going to be aggressive upon this because they need to turn around and look to people and say, look, we're taking it seriously. We know this can't happen. We know this was an awful look for our program to see this being what's shown. So it's a significant suspension up front, and we ask him to go to what anger management, whatever you want to call it, you know, mm-hmm. counseling, whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And then it's, it, the ball moves into Jawan Howard's court at that point. The one thing I followed up with, because we're going to get to Bobby Kremens here in a second, get his thoughts on this. Mike Francis is with us in the studio this morning on GCR. The thought of getting rid of the handshake line. I don't like that. I, 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 can't, I can't believe it. Like, I can't believe that's where this conversation went, was getting rid of the handshake line. Because we've had a cup. And again, I'm, I'm not trying to dismiss this. This was a bad look. But let's not overblow it either. Like, no... It was a slap. <laughs> hey, come on, man. This is not the end of the world. I can't fathom the concept of getting rid of the handshake. If, if we're not capable 
of competing and then saying good game afterwards. Yes. Like, what what are we doing in society? <laughs> and kids deserve that. I always say that just like before the game when you do announcements. You know, I've had assistant coach like, you want me to shake the other kid's hand? I'm like, no, I'm going to shake his hand because as a head coach, I owe it to that kid. Like, we, we have to – as a coach, when you're really doing what you're doing, you have to keep the kids in – uh, in in front in your mindset in front like I'm always going to be able to think about all right how does this benefit the kid and sometimes as a coach you got to take an L not I, many times I've taken an L for the kids to benefit mm. you know what I mean mm. so shaking hands at the end of a hundred point loss yeah it's not like, fun right no, yeah a seventy point loss like and the thing about it we lost seventy to a, a school that I used to be the head coach at and the damn head coach used I used to coach him <laughs> like I was a quarterback coach. I was his quarterback coach, and you know when he was in high school, and so you know it, it, it wasn't exact. He's like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm like, nah, like we we didn't play well, right? You know what I mean? Right. Like it, it is what it is. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. You, what am I supposed to do? Tell you to be a worse coach, <laughs> like yeah, coach exactly, worse, exactly. in order to make nah, it more competitive? It's my job. Stop. Right. Exactly. Right. All right, Mike Francis is with us this morning here on GCR. Uh, we will. Uh, we got a lot to cover this morning, but obviously a lot of people talking about the Juwan Howard situation. I want to talk also about the Maryland job, and it's been a little while since we brought on our next guest. Of course, a legend in college basketball, a man who uh, got a lot of, my God, you think about that run he had at Georgia Tech with Mark Price and Matt, Matt Harpering and uh, Stephon Marbury, right? Was he Mar- He was Marbury, wasn't yes. he? My <laughs> God, man, what a run this man had during his time at Georgia Tech. He's now, of course, with uh, Sirius XM and ESPNU Radio. It is a pleasure to welcome back to the program Coach Bobby Kremens is with us now here on GCR. Coach, it's Glenn Clark and Coach Mike Francis here in Baltimore. It's great to catch up with you, sir. Thank you for taking a couple of minutes for us. Okay, yeah, it's always good to hear people from Baltimore. I like recruiting Baltimore. Dwayne Farrell. Oh, a yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, that worked out all right for you. That worked yeah. out okay. Of course, yeah. you, had a, you had some legendary – we were just talking about Gary a second ago because we were talking about coaches who um, – were demonstrative on the sidelines, <laughs> and his name came up. You guys had some legendary battles over the years. Yeah, yeah, we sure, we sure did. And was... Perry Clark was my assistant. He he went to Demata, and he just loved recruiting that Washington, Baltimore area. And it was great to you know fly into Baltimore, and go you know go over there and um, by the arena, and and it was great. It was a lot of fun. Well, it's good to chat with you, Coach. Thank you for taking the time for us this morning. We were just talking about this. I, we, we can talk all about what happened with Juwan, but I, I, Coach Francis and I are in agreement. Like, this idea of throwing away the handshake line to me is is insane. I cannot believe people were actually suggesting that the answer to this is we do away with postgame handshakes. I, I would like to hope that we are still capable of c- civility as a society, and even in the name of competition, we can do that. What's your reaction to people suggesting that we can't do handshake lines any longer? Oh, it's ridiculous. I totally agree with you. You know, there's a word called sportsmanship. And sportsmanship is a major, major part of, of, of our game. It's been that way uh, since, the be- since the beginning where you have a class and sportsmanship. To me, you know, if you, if you, you eliminate sportsmanship from the game, I think that's a major, major mistake. And and one of the great sportsmanship is uh, being able to accept the loss and shaking hands. Um, you know, I had a rule as a coach. Um, I never coached the other teams. Uh, I, I never coached the other team. I, I let the coach, the other opposing coach, it's his team. Whatever he wants to do with his team, that's his business. If he wants to run it up on me, fine. If he wants to call a timeout with, you know, five seconds left, and he's up 20 points, fine my philosophy i'll go shake his hand and say great game and my philosophy you know what what goes around comes around and there'll be a time when i'll have his ass <laughs> up you know 15 or 20 and then that'll be up to me you know do i do i you know seek revenge at that point and, and send him a message and call my own time out and i might i might you know i i used to coach by a lot by instinct but i had a rule never never i don't care what that coach did and as a, as bad as it was, and hopefully he'll figure it out later. Uh, I've had coaches call and apologize to me, you know, after the fact when they when they realize what they've done was, you know, just very unsportsmanlike. And in regards to you know, um, um, Dwayne Howard, I coached against him. I coached against Michigan, and those guys were great. And and what a year he had last year. And he's got to learn. He's young. 
this is what is this, his second or third year? Yeah, as a head coach. As a head coach, right? It's yeah, he made a mistake. Now, you know the if, if the, the way the situation worked out. I, I was at the, my alma mater had a reunion. I was at the South Carolina LSU game. Yes, uh, Saturday. So I did not see everything. But you know the the way it worked out. You know, Greg Gard could have said you know to the official, no, no timeout, let him play, and there would have been no incident. But you know. Uh, Dwayne's got he's got to understand uh, that you know they are allowed to call timeout and get the reset on the clock and it's it's good that the kids you know I know the subs were in there at the time I mean you could go on and on and on but obviously the culprit here is is coach Howard and he's got to he's got to understand if I was him I would call Greg Gard I'd call that assistant I would uh, publicly apologize and say, look, I made a mistake. I let my, you know, I let my emotions get the best of me. I, I, I would apologize to them first with a phone call, and then I would apologize publicly. And then you got to brace yourself for whatever the commissioner or the AD, whoever's gonna, um, whoever's gonna set the the penalty. Who who's gonna set the penalty? The the supervisor, official, probably the the com- the commissioner, right? Probably, although the co- I, I think the school could step in, right? I, I I would think that like the school could have their say and just say we'd like to take care of this internally ourselves, couldn't they? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think the I think the athletic director is going to talk to his people. Then he's got to talk. The commissioner's got to be a. You have the supervisor of officials. That's that. Don't forget that person. Mm-hmm. Uh, that person is one person. And um, and then you you know uh, he just got to accept the penalty, and and move on. And whatever the penalty is going to be, you know he's not going to get fired over it. I think that would be a mistake because he's a young coach. He's been very successful, and uh, it's you know he's a Michigan guy, so his school's got to stick behind him. Uh, but they also got to send a message to him that you know this is not this is not the way Michigan coaches um, handle themselves. Sam, by the way, Mike was literally just saying some of the things you just said, Coach, about not coaching the other team, right? Like, I'm coaching my team. I'm not worried about that. Co- no, I've been in that situation, you know, and uh, I, I got my revenge. <laughs> <laughs> I, You know, there were times when I got my revenge, and uh, there were times I let it go. But I never – and, you know, there's been a lot of incidents uh, in my coaching career. Not a lot, but a, 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 a more, you know, several, at least several where the other coach did something like that. And truthfully, you know, it really pissed me off. But, you know, again, you know, I I had no, no, that's his business. That's his team. And I always felt like, you know, let him coach his team any way he wants. I'm going to coach my team. And that was the end of it. I mean, I I think that's easily said. And I I, I think we can all agree that that, this is the weird part. I'll make a comparison, Coach. I worked the the Loyola-Lehigh game last night here in Baltimore. Right. And it was senior night, and Loyola just absolutely destroyed Lehigh at home. And it was a great win for them. They had lost six straight. I mean, th- th- this was a really special night. And with, you know, a minute and a half left, um, Tavares Hardy wanted to get his – he wanted to get his, his senior that has barely played. He wanted to get him back on the floor. So he called a timeout in order to do it, right? And I would think that everybody involved would understand that circumstance and would understand and, and not be – th- th- we, we could all be adults and understand what's going on. And that's the only part of this. I, I don't – if somebody said something to Juwan Howard that set him off, that's unacceptable too, right? Like, there's a lot of things that I think can be unacceptable. But the idea of thinking that somebody's supposed to stop coaching or stop caring about their team and only think about yours in the final minutes, I I will never be able to get on board with that in any circumstance, right? Like, right. I'll, I'll never be able to grasp the idea of, you know, you got to worry about <laughs> my team now because there's two minutes left and you kicked our asses today. Yeah. You know, one of the biggest things a young coach has to deal with is um, failure. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, uh, what a year they had last year. What a what a le- year he had last year. And, you know, the success was incredible and the notoriety. And, you know, all this year, you know, they're hanging in there, but they're getting bumped around. And you, you've got to deal with failure. You've got to deal with setbacks. And that's a big part of coaching. And he's a young coach. And, again, he could learn a valuable lesson from this. Uh, no question about that. Bobby Cremens is with us here on Glenn Clark Radio. Coach Mike Francis sitting in with us this morning. Um, Coach, while we got you, I want to talk to you about the Maryland job, if I could, because I, I, I'm in a weird place where I, I think it's a good job, and I think there's plenty of reasons for somebody to want that job, but people bring up names to me, and I say, man, if I've got – if I'm Ed Cooley, for example, at Providence, and I'm at my alma mater, and everybody loves me, 
and I don't have the pressure of needing to win a national championship in order to get people to love me? Do I want to leave happy for the Maryland job? Is that is the job that good that it's worth me leaving somewhere where I'm happy for the Maryland job? So I want to pose it to you in that that way. I know it's a good job, but is it a job that's so good and so obvious? It's been 20 years since they've made the Final Four. Is it a job that's so good that someone should leave a place where they're happy for the chance to be the Maryland basketball coach? That's a great point. Great point. And, you know, uh, my, my, my re- reaction to you is, uh, no, they should not. Okay. Now, you know, I had my, I mentioned my alma mater where I was this weekend. And, um, you know, I left Georgia Tech for two days. Yeah, we uh, remember. To go to, to go to South Carolina. And, and it turned out, you know, once I got there, it had nothing to do with South Carolina. I felt like Judas. Um, <laughs> Now we, had, we, you know, I'd been at Georgia Tech a while, and it was my alma mater, and I thought, you know, maybe a change would be good. But I made a big, big, big mistake, and it almost cost me my life, my career, and um, and and then I, you know, I went back to Georgia Tech, and I felt like uh, I had to hide because I was so embarrassed for my alma mater, and even going back this weekend, you know, people still bring it up, but that, you know, everybody's been great to me at South Carolina. It's my alma mater. I love it. I played for Frank McGuire there, played against you guys in Maryland, and I'll never forget my time there. But I screwed up. And so my advice is exactly what you said. You know, I know Ed. I would say, Ed, are you happy? And if he said to me, Coach, I'm really, really happy, I would say just what you said. Don't mess with it. Yeah. If he needs a new challenge, if, if he said to me, if Ed said, you know, Coach, I, I just feel like, it's time to move on. I need a new challenge. I really do. I've been here, and you know, at so, at some point they'll get tired of me here, and they'll, they'll want to get rid of me. And I really feel this would be a great move for me. I would say go, take it. So it it all depends on his feelings. Um, you know, I, Maryland is a great job. I I got really mad at Maryland when they left the ACC. Mm-hmm. I called Gary, and I said, Gary, what the hell's going on? How'd you let that happen? Because Maryland was a founding member of the ACC. Uh, I loved competing against Maryland as a player, as a coach. You know, Lefty and I had some battles. I'll, I'll be very frank with you. We played well against Maryland. Sure. For some reason, yep. when we went to Cole Fieldhouse, we played well. And it was fun to see that environment. And I just couldn't believe, you know, that Maryland was leaving the ACC. Now, I've gotten over it. I've gotten over the fact that there's 15 teams in the ACC <laughs> You know, it, you know, it's a new landscape. I get it, and and life goes on. But Maryland is a great job. Um, it's a great area for pl- basketball players, um, and it you know it. I would have Gary Williams involved. I w- I would definitely have Gary Williams input. Let me ask you this: Is there any former Maryland players out there coaching at a mid division one school that are doing well? Yeah. Is, is Juan Dixon a coach? Yes, he's Cop- a coach at Coppin State, and and they've done okay. You know, like it's they, they've done it's a it's a brutal job. You know, I mean, it, it's a job yeah. where you you got to take a lot of losses in order to make your budget. And you how know, many years has he been there? Three now at 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 Coppin as the head coach, and and look, I I, I think to your point, the uh, coach, I think that Juan deserves the right to be involved in the process because it's it's like the yeah. old Steve Spurrier thing at Florida where they asked him to interview for the job and he was like, look at your look at your trophy case, <laughs> right? Like there's your interview. I think Juan absolutely deserves to be in the conversation. I do think it's a tough sell to to hire someone, anyone, if you would remove the name, someone who has three years of n- not particularly yeah. strong success at Coppin State as the Maryland basketball coach. Right. You're, 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 well, you're absolutely right. I mean, you're right on. But – you know, I, I I wouldn't give him a well. I, I you don't want you don't want courtesy interviews. Nobody wants that. Yeah. But you never know. Um, I I'd give the kid a, um, an interview, and just listen to him. I'd like to know what he had, and then I'd look at my other options, and I would tell I would tell uh, Juan. I would tell him. I would say, look, you know we love you. You know what you've done for us, but this might not be the right time. And if we can get the right person that we has more experience than you, and is uh, you know we got to get the best person. But believe me, you know you know we love you, and you'll always be a big part of Maryland. And if if, if you know, don't burn any bridges now, because it could come around uh, later on. Um, give me give me a couple names, and I'll, I'll I'll respond to you. Coach, this is Mike Francis. How you doing, sir? Good, Mike. Much Good to res- hear your voice. Hey, much respect for you, Coach. You had that New York connection going when you was <laughs> Kenny Anderson, man. Oh, thank, 
Thank God I did. Thank yeah, God yeah. I had that New York so, connection. I want to throw a name out to you. Tell me what you think. I've been talking to people about it. How about Coach Bray? Mike Bray. Yes, yes sir. Um, you, know, you know what? Good name. Good name. Uh, very good. Um, you know, of course, Mike, the master kid. Yes. Uh, you know, Morgan Wooten was a good friend of mine. And those, I, well, I always think, you know, I had an assistant, Perry Clark. And those guys, they worship. They worship. Uh, I hired Perry Clark because of uh, Morgan Wooten. Hmm. Uh, I didn't know Perry Clark, and I hired him sight and seen. I used to take players. If Morgan Wooten, I'd come into uh, the Washington area, and if I was looking for a player, and if uh, Morgan Wooten told me about a player, and he said, Bobby, he could play. I would offer that kid a scholarship, <laughs> sight unseen. And I, I actually did that my first year when I got the Georgia Tech job. I took a kid um, from um, the, the area just because Morgan Wooten told me to. Easy. And that kid's name was Brian Howard. He played one year for me, and he had a hell of a year. And then he went and tried to play professional baseball. Um, I'll never forget Brian Howard. That was like a long, long time ago. But I took that kid sight unseen because of Morgan Wooden, and he started for me at Georgia Tech, and we, we played an AC, our first ACC game ever at Cold Field House. Guess what happened, guys? We, we won the game, and Brian Howard had like 14 points. I mean, nice. And, it, it, and that was my first ACC win <laughs> as, as a head coach. That was my first year, which was big, 1981-82. But, um, you know, getting back to Mike Bray, who I know very well, uh, you know, he's been there a long time. And you know what? Um, that could be an interesting one. Now, Mike's not going to come in for an interview. No. you got to offer – Mike's got to be offered the job. He's not messing around because uh, he could stay at Notre Dame for, you know, another five, ten years. Who knows? Uh, but if somebody just flat out offered him the job, um, I would think Mike Bray would have to think about that. Let me let me throw two more names at you before we let you go, Coach. And we really appreciate the time you've taken for us. Bobby Kremen's with us here on GCR. Um, the one that everybody still wants to talk about. What would you think if let's just say Maryland swings and misses on their first couple? Is there a point where you would consider calling Rick Pitino and seeing if he'd want the job for a couple of years? No. Okay. No. No. I think you talked about happiness. Rick has been through a lot. We all know he's a great coach and uh, what he's been through, and I think he's found happiness. Um, he's got a great situation up there. He, he lives up by the golf course up there, you know, Wingfoot. Um, you know, Rick is Catholic, New York, ca uh, Italian Catholic. Iona is, is a great fit for him. Uh, he has said publicly that that's where he wants to end his career. He'd like to coach there for maybe 10 years, get a 1,000 wins. No, I think Rick, leave Rick Pitino alone. Speaking of Iona, the two names that have seemed like the most likely and the most practical throughout this process, I want to combine them together, Kevin Willard from Seton Hall and Andy Enfield from USC, who has a strong connection to the area, and the word has been that he would be very interested in the Maryland job. What about those two guys? Do those seem like the most practical candidates to you? Yeah, yeah you got to visit with them. You don't, want, you don't want them to, you know, rob the bank on you. <laughs> you know, they're, you know, most likely, you know, their agents are the ones that are going to be talking, not them. Yep. And, you know, for them to leave a, a good situation, you know, Maryland's going to have to really step up. But you don't want to break the bank. Um, I didn't know about the connection with Andy. What's what's the connection? He was there, at Johns quick? Hopkins um, here in Baltimore. It's actually where like his career began. Um, uh, he was a player at Johns Hopkins mm -hmm. and um, with, like has close yeah. relationships from okay. that day. And he's from Shippensburg, you know, Pennsylvania, which isn't terribly far from here. He's got no. family. Like it's there's yeah. a there's a logical reason for to think yeah. that he would be interested in the job. Yeah, as long as they don't, you know, as, as long as the agent doesn't get in there and just start making ridiculous demands. Um, yeah, you know, I would listen. I would listen. And, um, and again, those are two coaches who are not going to come for interviews. Yep. you got you got to yep. offer them Make the job. offer. Yep, 100%. And, and, again, they might just be looking to you to turn around, especially Andy Enfield might want to turn around to USC and say, yeah, do you love me? Mm -hmm. How about $8 million a year? Do you love me for that? Absolutely. And that might be the way it Absolutely. goes. And, you know, you know, we talk about ADs. And and ADs, uh, one of their t one of their major responsibilities to the university is being able to uh, hire and fire the right people. Hmm. That's what they get paid for. That's what an athletic 
athletic director is supposed to be doing. And, uh, you know, they got to do their diligent work. They got to get out there and bust their butt. And they got to make the right call and bring bring that person to a committee, go, come back to the board of trustees. Again, I, I, I think Gary Williams should be involved in the process. Um, and then, you know, and see what the committee says, see what the board says. Coach, uh, but it, it is a process, and I think that process needs to really be worked at. Coach Bobby Crammons, man, it's so great to catch up with you. Where, where are we hearing you? When might we, we, we be hearing you on Sirius XM or on so, TV? What? I'm, I'm, I'm writing a book. I'm, okay. I'm staying busy. You know, with the COVID thing, I've kind of laid low the last couple of years. I got two grandsons. I, I, I still watch a lot of basketball. I'm not in the trenches, uh, but I follow basketball very closely, and in particular the ACC. Well, co- Coach, it's great to hear your voice. It's great to catch up with you. Thank you so much for taking the time for us this morning. Yeah, I Let's chat again. With you guys. See you, Mike. Have Bye. a good one, Coach. Bye. Coach Bobby Cremins, uh, absolute legend, obviously, in the sport, and um, some great thoughts. I want to talk more about the Maryland job next. Uh, Mike, I want to get into you know what you want what you think matters, all of those things. I want to talk about that. Anything else we need to say about Jawan Howard? Can we put that to bed at this point? I think we covered. Yeah, ma- I mean, it, it, it. there will be some kind of disciplinary action. Of course. Uh, yeah, yep. that's it. Yeah, but I agree with you, and I agree with uh, Bobby, that the idea of firing him, it, it's way over the top, way over the top to me. Again, I get it. It's not a good look. There's no doubt it's not a good look. But, I mean, come on. Come on, let's let's settle down a little bit. It's you know, this, this, to your point, he didn't throw a chair, he didn't choke out a student on campus, something along those lines. Like those aren't the things that happened here. All right, uh, today's show. Uh, by the way, a reminder, as I pointed up there, Gary Williams is on the cover of the new print issue of Press Box. They're celebrating the 20th anniversary this weekend down in College Park. We celebrate the 20th anniversary of Maryland basketball's national championship. Go pick that up right now and. Today's show is also brought to you by your local Toyota dealer and buyatoyota.com. Make the most out of every day in a Toyota RAV4. Available in hybrid or gas-only models, a RAV4 can get you where you want to go in style. Check out buyatoyota.com for deals on new RAV4s from your local Toyota dealer today. It's Glenn Clark Radio. Sports fans, the wait is over. The all-new FanDuel Sportsbook is now open at Live Casino and Hotel in Hanover, Maryland. This is your chance to win big right in your own backyard. Bet on every sport with self-service kiosks and watch all of the action from the best seat in the house. Make every moment more at the all-new FanDuel Sportsbook at Live Casino and Hotel in Hanover. Please play responsibly. Gambling problem? Please call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit MD Gambling help.org that first sip that first bite mm. start your day off right with a delicious breakfast at royal farms choose from a fantastic selection of fresh royal farms breakfast sandwiches and top it off with a rich hot cup of the freshest coffee in the world at royal farms breakfast is available day and night it's the freshest breakfast in the world real fresh real fast royal farms the newest edition of Press Box is available now. On the cover, we celebrate the 20th anniversary of Maryland men's basketball's 2002 NCAA Tournament Championship. As Gary Williams reflects on how the program rose from the ashes of NCAA sanctions to the pinnacle of the sport, and why his perspective of the title run has changed now two decades later. Plus, Juan Dixon, Lonnie Baxter, and the rest of the team relive the moments that ultimately led them to cutting down the nets in Atlanta. Press Box is available for free at over 500 area locations, including 60 Royal Farm stores. And you can always find the entire edition, as well as the best daily coverage of the Orioles, Ravens, and Terps at PressBoxOnline.com. The biggest pro wrestling stars today and all time all have one thing in common. You've heard them on Jobbing Out. Matt and Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks. Thanks for having us, man. Appreciate it. The great Kurt Angle. Thanks for having me on the show. I appreciate it. Matt Riddle. Yeah, man. Thanks, man. The champ, Drew McIntyre. Thank you for having me. The great Ron Simmons. Keith Lee. Appreciate you guys having me, man. Bill Goldberg. My pleasure. Charlotte. Thank you so much for having me. Mick Foley is with us. This is the greatest name for a wrestling show I've ever heard. MJF. I'm glad you're happy I'm on this show because I'm freaking miserable. Le Champion. Chris Jericho. Le Champion. AJ, Aaron, Brandon, and Glenn are talking pro wrestling every week on Jobbing Out. Find it at PressBoxOnline.com slash radio, iTunes, and SoundCloud. Stay tuned. Your chance to win a million dollars is coming up. Probably not from us. 
you're listening to Glenn Clark Radio. All right, back in here on GCR and Monday edition of the program, and it's been great to have uh, Coach Mike Francis. So let's let's again let's let's touch base. Where are you as far as like football is concerned? What what's the story now? I resigned from football. Yep. Uh, I am actually working as an alt one, which is uh, the track of being an administrator. My goal of, uh, eventually is to be a principal. Okay. Because uh, you know everybody says you, you know you service our community and the kids and the athletes, but there's only 200 kids that play sports. There's 2,300 kids in the building. So who's supporting those kids? So to me, becoming a principal allows me to. And an administrator allows me to affect a whole school or the whole district for that being if you're able to unite the feeders as well and, and make change in the community. And not just sports, because at the end of the day, we stop playing sports. Now we learn life lessons, but again, it's more students not getting that support or being told things or being helped along the way. So, and you can't do that and be an administrator uh, once they don't allow you to coach when you're administering. I remember you and I having this conversation that yes. night we were hanging out at Jimmy's. I remember, like, I, I have this weird relationship with Bith Pogey, right? And uh. it's, it's in no ways disrespectful, right? right. Like, appreciative of... I'm, you you talk to people that have been in Biff Pogey's life, yes. and they tell you he impacted their lives. Mm -hmm. And I, I have great appreciation for that. But I was never comfortable with the hero pre presentation of mm -hmm. Biff Pogey. And I said... Because people that play the cello need scholarships too, True. right? And like, I'm not trying to be disrespectful in any way, but Biff was, yeah, giving kids opportunities that could play football. Mm -hmm. And that to me is, it, it's a good thing, but I stopped short of heroic because he's trying to win football games. He wasn't saying, oh, you, you know, you're just an underprivileged kid that, that you can't help me. You know, here, I'm going to take care of you too. It was always the difficult part of it. I can recognize it as being a wonderful thing, a wonderful thing, but I was always very uncomfortable with the idea of hero in describing Biff Pogey because, to your point, there are more kids than just athletes that need to be touched. There are more kids than just football players mm -hmm. that, that need an opportunity, that need that type of chance, right? So, and I'm not trying to be, God, every time you say that, I feel like I'm taking a shot at Biff. And I, it's, no, because I, I didn't hear anybody talking about Biff when he was at Gilman. Uh, not the same way. Exactly. Not the same so way. So why no. is it now that he's at St. Francis, Francis that people have opinions? It was okay at Gilman. Right. I right. I mean, Cyrus Jones, who's a good friend of mine, and he used to play in programs with me. His dad. Love used Cyrus. To play, you know, his dad used to play for me in, in, in men's I guess that, that makes sense. Yeah. And, make... and his son went to Gilman, yep. and he loved it. But no one talked. To, I didn't even know Biff Pogey's name when he was at Gilman. I'll be honest with you. It wasn't until he came to St. Francis when he became it, it became an issue with. Biff. So you think there's more of a racial connotation to uh, you know to it, who it, you're helping right, and what you're doing. Right. Uh, by the way, and I I don't doubt. I want to make that very clear. I don't doubt that's true mm -hmm. either. Uh, no question. I don't doubt that that's true. Mm -hmm. I just I always am a little uncomfortable with the hero aspect of it. Right, like that that it comes off a little white saviory to me. Right, whereas like these dudes. These guys are really good football players. This is sort of like the Michael Orr story to me, right? Like uh. the, the Michael Orr story isn't about Sandra Bullock. Right. The Michael Orr story is there was a kid that was a hell of a football player that didn't have an opportunity. If, if he had been given the opportunity, he was going to succeed no matter what. He was a hell of a football player. He was damn good. He wasn't, again, the movie made it really awful. He it pretended like he was taught how to play football by, by Lee Antui. That's not... True. remotely true there's nothing true it's not even a, a cousin of the truth he was a football player well before he ever met the Tui family which doesn't mean that the Tui's didn't do a good thing by taking him in mm -hmm. and and helping him out and all that that can be a good thing but they're not the story true he was the story he was the talented human he was the guy that had an exceptional ability to do something that to me deserved the recognition and the credit because of it. And I seen recently some uh, he came out and said some things about what was different. In oh, the he's he's been like he, we learned really quickly he was not comfortable with like it was a very awkward situation because like this was this larger. I mean, she won an Academy Award, yeah, right? Like it was did. this huge motion picture, and it was very clear how uncomfortable he was with all of it. And I was like, oh, but it is Hollywood, oh. right? Yeah, and I, I'm not mad at that. Yeah. You know, it's so funny you bring that up. People get super mad. I. Did you watch, did you, uh, Paul, did you, did you see Captain Phillips? You remember that film with Tom yeah, Hanks? Yeah, yeah. You see Captain Phillips? Yes, sir. I, first of all, I'm a Tom Hanks. I mean, come on, it's Tom Hanks, right? <laughs> this is a, this is a, it's America that we're talking about right now. Like, it's, let's start there. But even among Tom Hanks' performances, 
Like the last 15 minutes of Captain Phillips, dude, that's as as good of acting as he's ever done. Like the shaking, the the the, the physically like lo- that's unbelievable. I'm not trying to say that Captain Phillips is the greatest motion picture ever made, but it was a damn good movie. Everything about it was really good. And I remember talking to a buddy of mine about it. He's like, yeah, but didn't you hear it didn't happen like that at all? <laughs> Bro, it's a movie. It's not a documentary. <laughs> Neither did E.T. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> right. Like, I got crazy oh, news e- for you. E.T. E- e- didn't happen? No, right. he didn't phone yeah, him. Yeah, well, you just... <laughs> You just really broke this poor boy's heart, oh, my friend. Literally my entire <laughs> life. <laughs> you just broke his heart <laughs> by telling him that. Like, my, g- it's a movie, man. <laughs> like, it's a worst movie if you tell the boring story. Nobody wants to see that movie. It ain't their job. And so I'm not mad at them. Yeah. I am by no means mad at anybody involved in the making of The Blind Side for the way the story was told. I get it. I mm-hmm. understand what they were doing in order to tell a movie. But it was just very uncomfortable for Michael Orr. And the bigger point, like, the story of Michael Orr should never have been about the white family that saved him. Mm. They didn't save him. Michael Orr should have been given opportunities because everybody deserves those type of opportunities. Yes. That's the thing that, you know, that comes back to me. Like, but did he have them? He didn't. He didn't. I understand. And, again, there's nothing. I'm, you're, I, yeah. I'm not saying what they did was bad yeah. or wrong. I just don't think the story of Michael Orr should have been that family. I think the story of Michael Orr deserved to be the hard work that he put in in order to get himself to the place where he could reach the NFL, become a Super Bowl champion. AJ will tell you we had three Michael Wars. So, okay. Uh, he will tell you. I'll let him share with you. But I've had, you know, kids once they've graduated and, and needed a little help and needed, you know, a place to stay that made it more, uh, how would I say, would make the transition to college easier. Mm-hmm. Uh, Frank Brown, who uh, was all state and uh, – once he graduated North County High School, where he played, he moved in with me to go to Montgomery because that's the only one that had football. Mm-hmm. So we've done that. And a couple other guys after they graduated. And uh, Tion Kennedy, I mean, excuse me, Tavon Kennedy went to Garrett. But before he left, he moved in, you know, he moved in with me so we could help with stability and help him with, oh, you got to do this, 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 yep. and this. And, and it wasn't. Like, we ain't make no movie out of it, but you do have to help with that opportunity. It, it, how small it is. So 100%. AJ can, he'll share with I you. think it's an incredible, but if, if that person went on to great success, would you want to be the center of that story? No. Exactly. That's, no, no, that's no, no. my, like, no. it, it's their story. Yeah, it's their exactly. story, right? Like, I just want a t-shirt. Yeah, <laughs> that's all you're asking for. Yeah, I'm hook asking. me up. You know, like it's like when your boy makes it. I want to be able to sit front row exactly. at, at the the wrestling yes, show. Let yes. me be out there. By the way, AJ is gonna be back in town here in a couple weeks 19th. with uh, MCW yep. uh, here in Baltimore County. Looking forward to that as the whole crew gets together. Yeah. And, uh, that's a cool thing. Another dude. night at Jimmy's. Well, bro. I mean, you think I'm gonna <laughs> say no to that? Man, John, John and Tony, we're coming. Oh man, that was a, that was a really. I'm really sad about how everything went after that because like that night was freaking magical, yeah, man. Was. That was yeah, a was. magical night to have all them together celebrating that night. It's a real bummer, of course, how yeah. things turned, but yeah. what a night that was. All right, let's talk about the Maryland job. Mike Francis is here. Hour number two of today's show, brought to you by uh, Live Casino and Hotel. Of course, always the best place to be for all the big events in the FanDuel Sportsbook at Live Casino and Hotel. Uh, get your bets in at any of the 51 self-service kiosks. Enjoy the delicious food at Sports and Social Live Casino and Hotel in Hanover. So, what matters to you? Maryland needs a basketball coach. Mm-hmm. What matters to you as someone who cares about Maryland? Yes. I know how close you are with Mike yeah. Loxley. Yes. I know, obviously, like this is your home. This is a place that matters to you. They need a basketball coach. What matters to you in finding their next basketball coach? You know, when I say I'm a Maryland home, I mean really, really. Like I, when I first started coaching in back 91, 92, when I started coaching high school, I started working camps. And there used to be a junior combine at Maryland that I would – Wow. Markowitz and – Duffner was a coach Whew. and all that. So I've been. By the way, do you know Mark Duffner is on the Bengals staff now? Yeah, well, he was he was in Miami when AJ was down there. Right. So uh, I'm sitting in the lobby waiting for AJ, and Mark comes down, and Brandon Albert, who's also from Yeah, Glen Burnie, absolutely. They get off the yeah. elevator, and they're like, what you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't realize. They had no idea. Yeah, they, they oh, wow, that that's cool. That was AJ's that's cool, man. You know that's that's I mean? really cool. That's the way it happens. So, um, um, but, again, a Merlin Homer. Definitely going back. Also, uh, Coach B, Coach Bree, uh, Freeze, um, 
her two sons, Marcus and Tyler, used to come to our skill sessions. Oh, that's cool. For a long time, and then we've worked. You know, I've worked camps. It was their it was their birthday like last that. week, yeah. and um, they got to be part of the post game interview yeah. after they got. I think it was the Ohio State win. It yeah. was really cool to see that. Yes, it was. It was good to see, and like that. You know, that week that Tyler rung the bell, oh. we started, you know, skill sessions and he came in and uh, coach was there. All She was always there, very involved. But the thing about Maryland and with uh, Keith Booth, who was on the staff yep. at one time, he played uh, some travel ball stuff with me. Uh, Bino played travel. I had them two together. So I have a connection with, you know, some people there. And um, I want to see someone who comes in who can just recruit. And we can't say they have to be able to recruit Maryland because kids don't always want to stay home. Like, and you can't blame kids. Like if I it's been really nice to see more of the football kids choosing. Yeah. It's been really nice. And so I, I, I don't think we would dismiss that Mike Loxley has played a significant role in that. Oh, big time. So in that way, I would love for there to be a basketball version of Mike Loxley that's so – But who is that? I, and that's the point, right? I don't know who that is. Yeah. But if, if Mike that, Francis. No, <laughs> right, Mike, no. Mike uh, uh, <laughs> MF to MD. Yeah, Mike and Mike. No. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> but um, the thing is, I want somebody who can recruit. Uh, they have to build a staff that's going to allow them to go into places like New York. Uh, we already have a connection in Philly. Um, the two kids from MLT. Yep, yep. With Andre. Ayala and – Andre is a very, very good friend of mine at okay. Motep, the head coach. I've known him forever, uh, working hoop group events and all. he got a great program. But now you got to be able to step out into other areas too. And I think it's a different recruiting. I wanted to ask Coach Crimmins, but I didn't – you know, when you're listening to Legends, you don't – you know, you learn Let by him listening. Let talk, right, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. You learn by listening. But the, the Big Ten is different than the ACC, the type of play. Uh, the Big Ten is more of a power conference when it comes to basketball, very physical. ACC, we get up and down, we run. It's more of an athletic thing. So our kids coming up here in Maryland are more of an athletic type of players when they come in. So they want to go somewhere, they're going to get up and down the floor, get up and down the floor. But to me, the Big Ten is all about sets. It's heavy sets. It's heavy sets. It's ball screens, pin downs, double screen, dribble handoff, you know, all those kind of things, which – some schools and some leagues, they just want to press and get up and down and score. For well, instance, there are people Kentucky. that complain about the style of basketball as being boring or not as entertaining. But that's as, the Big Ten. Yep. That's the Big Ten. So now Wisconsin's never going to not do that. Right. Like but that's neither is uh, neither is Purdue. Yep. Neither is, and that's the thing. The Big Ten is different. And um, James over at Mid Atlantic Select, the kid who just left Iowa. Oh, what was his name? The um, big the big kid, Luca yeah. Garza. Okay, so yeah. Luca was in like the tenth grade, and. Um, James, who runs Mid Atlantic Selects, a good friend of mine, he was um, one of my point guard, Kamari Wilkerson, was playing with him. And he asked me, he said, What do you think about this kid? I said, He's Big Ten. He's like, No way, Mike. I'm like, Yeah, he's a Big Ten kid. Evaluated. Mm -hmm. That's what I did at the hoop group for Rob Kennedy and half the guys there. I mean, so I felt like that because of his size and he wasn't quick of feet, right. but he was big and he was skilled or coming into the skill, he's a perfect Big Ten player for his size. Athletically, he could not play at a school like Duke, if you see. He could not play at a, go a school like Syracuse, as you can see. So the recruiting has to change. And, and unfortunately, to get guys who can recruit guys like that, you need someone who's not from this area to do it, to be honest with you. You need someone who has the experience – with that kind of play and with those kind of guys that you're going to recruit, to me, that's I mean, interesting. That's just, I mean, again, I don't, I'm not Bobby Crimmins, you know, I'm not, right. you know, those guys, but I would tell you, I would look at it at a different approach, and that's why I say Mike Bray. You can't, you can't force, but you can't force a style no. and make other people play to your right. style. And you're in a conference where everyone plays that way, and I'm going to tell you, that's why I say Mike Bray. Okay. At Notre Dame, yep. he recruits those kind of players. He's had success recruiting those type of players. Pat Connaughton, the, you know. Uh, you know. Now, of course, he had a bit more range than, than some of these guys yeah. we're talking about. As it turns out, I don't think we knew how good Pat Connaughton was. Yeah, but uh, you get two of those guys, yeah. you compete more in the Big Ten, if you ask me. And that's why I look at him and his staff or however he puts together. I think they recruit the type of players at a higher level of the kids you're going to get um, when they come into the Big Ten. And that's just – I think the ACC is more athletic, more up and down. 
and the Big Ten's a more stronger set, more physical kind of play, and you need somebody who's going to come in and change it. So that's an interesting – look, Mike, I have every reason to think that Mike Bray would want the job. I mean, he's, I think, made it kind of clear privately that he would – crawl back to be back in the area and back home like there's every reason to think that he had a couple of really difficult seasons before this year this year has bounced back very nicely yes I think that and we were actually just talking about this with Patrick Stevens a week ago like I I think that he had sort of gone off the radar because things were going south at Notre Dame there was a thought that maybe he was starting to be on the hot seat at Notre Dame coming mm-hmm. into this year yeah now they have a really nice bounce back season albeit in a very down ACC this season like mm-hmm. the ACC is just awful this year um outside of you know unfortunately duke that's just the reality of the circumstances but even this duke team is not particular uh, among duke teams is not a great duke team they just happen to be the best of the acc at the moment but he's still winning like he's still but he winning to, but he had to switch remember he had to switch to get to the acc style right play. Uh, from from playing in the big east exactly right you know what i'm saying so again as you do that there's going to be a little bit of fall there's going to be a little bit of step back before you step to the next level and i think He's finally, you know, he's, does, he's made it right. Does it matter to you that he's 63 years old? It does not matter to me. Okay. Because he's going to hire a staff. All right, he's not going to do it on his own. He's going to hire a staff that's able to do it now. I mean, he's doing it now. And I don't care if he's 63. If he got the right people around him, it's funny. You you know, I wanted to say when Coach was here, I mean, Morgan Wooten coached for a no, very yeah, long right. time. You know, I know it's, it's high school, but it was probably the best high school program ever. And one of my biggest memories was working his camp and him remembering my name and calling me up to wow. the board to yeah, show that's a my big press deal. breaker. That's a big He's deal. Like, we talked about his press breaker. Coach Francis, you want to come up? I was like, whoa. Like, number one, he remembers my name. Like, that's big time, you know. And I think that that connection, again, you got the DeMatha connection with Coach Bray. You got the whole area that he will be able to tap into as far as coaches. And then you have him being able to – recruit in the Midwest. He was at he's at Notre Dame. Yep. So he's able to recruit in the Midwest. Yep. And 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 I think that's that would help him because that style of play that they had to adjust in the ACC a little bit is what Maryland's going to have to be to be successful. I think the kid name was Diamond. Like remember Diamond? Diamond those, Stone? Yeah, no. remember those guys came in? Oh, yeah, he came in from from uh, yeah, he in was Midwest. Milwaukee, You're right. He was right. Milwaukee. That's he a great point. Yeah, that, that was, was a transition yep. into, you know, that was a transition into what Maryland was trying to do like probably not that uh, it did not work out for Diamond Stone in Maryland, but no, I, I get your point, but he right? Was athletic, like, yep. he was super athletic, but not as physical, you know. And you got guys, other guys too, who having a great career uh, in the NBA right now, who's uh, a slender guy like Sticks, mm-hmm. who's having a great because it's wide open now. Yep, you know correct. What I mean? It's wide open, and he's with the best point guard in the league. Well, it's wide well, open. He was, and then they got rid yeah. of him, and uh, yeah, it's yeah, not. Yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm a big Phoenix Suns fan. Yeah. I, I spent two years out in Phoenix when D'Antoni was there and Amari and Nash. and st- It was just the greatest time I've ever had. And so I'm this massive Suns fan. So it was the greatest news in the world to me that yes. Sticks ended up in Phoenix. And then they declined his option, traded him to Indiana. And I'm like, mm, boy, oh, boy. I'm, I'm but bitter about that. And Chris Paul's out for eight weeks. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not I'm – not, <laughs> I'm, I'm not okay right now. Yeah. I'm, uh, I'm not okay whatsoever. I'm not handling it well. I'm stressed. But the style of play dictates – to me, the style of play dictates uh, who can be good as far as recruiting and, and – and Coach Williams, when he was at Maryland, he never had a problem with commuting. Uh, I mean, uh, recruiting because he probably had one of the best well, recruiters ever in Jimmy Pat's. Okay, but his uh, the argument <laughs> against the argument against Gary Williams, of and course, Billy Hahn. Well, he did. Well, Billy <laughs> Hahn was a hell of it. So the argument against Gary Williams is that he didn't really care that deeply about recruiting. He wouldn't wade into the you know the the AAU world. He stayed out of it. He said, "I'd rather have the guys that I like." And again, it worked out. He found but a two-star his guys did it. Yeah, he he found a two-star kid in Baltimore that was this yeah. slender shooter, and he turned him into the greatest player in in, in Maryland history. Who right? Who like, Tucci drove to yes. the University of Maryland on several occasions, saying, "Gary, you need to take this kid. Look at this kid. Look right. at this kid." Wor- worked out okay. Yeah, obviously, it, did. <laughs> it worked out okay. <laughs> history turned out to be all right. But but the argument that people made is, you need a coach. You need someone who's willing to get a bit dirtier, willing to do the things that Bill Self has clearly been willing to do at the University of Kansas and get involved in the D'Souza's of the world and get involved. Ah. You, that, that's the argument that is made by the fan base is that all of this NCAA rules be damned. Nobody cares about rules any longer. Never have. And, and in part because, frankly, the, and let's be fair, the rules are effed. I mean, the rules yeah. have been awful. They have been, thank God we're finally at the place of NIL. Thank God we're finally, like, 
it's archaic that it took this long, but we're finally getting to a place where it's advanced. But yet still, there is this, do you say we need to be, it's the, it was the Bruce Pearl conversation. It's not going to be Bruce uh. Pearl. He's going to stick around at Auburn, right? <laughs> like, but that was the Bruce Pearl conversation from within the fan base was Bruce Pearl's been under investigation multiple times by the NCAA. Is that really somebody we want to have be our coach? Where the flip side is, if the reason why he was under investigation is because he invited a dude to a cookout, um, yeah, I got no problem with that. Let him come be my coach tomorrow. Like, I, you can't get me to be angry about him inviting a recruit. Was it Aaron Kraft? Was that who it was? I think it was Aaron Kraft. You're really mad that he invited Aaron Kraft? Is that really what we're talking about here? If that's that was, the basis of this, nah, I'm good. You can go ahead and be my one, coach. That was the one that was reported. But and, I, and, right, and, that's, and that's the argument you yeah, get back, right? If, yeah, if that's what we know, yeah, imagine yeah. what we don't know, right? But, but what is when you say that, what are you still, talking about? It's, like, you can't. Um, First of all, if you're a good coach, you're going to be investigated, no matter what, because you're always going to piss somebody off. Someone's right. Gonna you're going to land a kid. You. Right. Someone's going to be mad that you recruited a kid they tried to get. Someone's going to be mad and think that they believe it's not possible to have the relationship where a kid would turn down the bag to come play for somebody who's not offering them the bag. And that's a lot to do with what's going on. Like some people, it's, it is a serious thing about loyalty and the, that relationship. And some kids and their families feel wholeheartedly welcoming. Like I knew that Coach Friedgen was the best person for my son. Hmm. Why was that? Because he was just like me. Okay. He was no nonsense. He didn't take any you know what. Yep. All right. And he was hard on his guys. He didn't let them do a lot of crazy stuff. Uh, he was respectful the whole way, always, no matter what. To this day, I could, is, you know, I could still text him. We talk and communicate. He's always telling me I got to come down and go fishing with him. I, but I, <laughs> I, went, I had breakfast with him in Charleston, and he was trying to get me to get AJ on the phone <laughs> to, to say, bro, I, Kevin Anderson built me a pool. Come down and <laughs> he literally calls it his Kevin Anderson pool. He'll yeah. tell you that. Yeah. Like, he calls it the Kevin Anderson Memorial Pool yeah. that he got built down in Charleston for it. Like, yeah. I, I love – I mean, I, I – I but, love Ralph. And that's the thing. That was that relationship. He called us in when AJ, after a sophomore, AJ called me said he wanted to commit. And I said, whoa, slow down. Let's wait and see. Right. And a lot of people thought I was trying to, like, hold things over. Or I was looking to get something for myself or that I was put off. I put off a lot of guys because I'm not the one you're recruiting. Right. I don't give a shit where Michael Jordan slept during the Olympics. <laughs> you're not going to take me to that. I don't care. So Georgia Tech, they got mad at me because I didn't want to take the fam- you know, I didn't want to take the tour. Wow, right? I've never heard this Wake story. For- oh yeah, Wake Forest was not exactly happy because of the t- I didn't want to take the tour. Notre Dame, I didn't take the tour. I went to the tailgate. That was where you were gonna be. <laughs> uh, exactly. That was That's- where you were gonna be, right? That was what mattered to you. We Am to, I? We went yeah. to Notre Dame. How spicier than brats? I don't, <laughs> I don't have to wake up at five in the morning and go to practice so how i like it means nothing right he has to be the one that like it and unfortunately a lot of parents don't see it like that that's in interesting recruiting. that's really interesting and i tell with my kids too, like pick a school for 40 years and not four because after the four you years be able how's to... it going to set you up for life right right that's the most important like my two aj will tell you my two choices for him if it was me it'd have been between naval academy and notre dame hmm Hmm. Because what it does for you after college. Sure. Like you walk into a job interview with a Notre Dame graduation ring on or a Naval Academy. Yeah. Like, come on. This, you, become the pre- you can become the president, come right? On, like right on top. Everybody's resume, that, yours yep. goes right on the top. Yep. And that's that's what it's about. It's not always about sports. And I just felt like that Coach Friedgen was the guy for the program. Uh, I feel like Loxley is kind of that way, too. He never, ever, ever put you off. He's, like, not a big-time guy. Like this, You and I talked about this before. Uh, Mike Francis is in studio with us this morning. We're going to have Rob Long join us in a few minutes. You and I talked about this before, and I always try to get people to explain why. I, I, I remember when this was all going on, mm-hmm. and I remember this push. And I've always liked Mike Loxley, right? But I never understood why it was so different, right? Like, why was it any different with Mike Loxley than it was with James Franklin, who's, you know, a likable guy and was... And I never understood that. And so I said, I need to take some time and talk to people and Mm -hmm. get the answer to this question. And the word that kept coming back to me was real, was genuine, Mm -hmm. was, you know, it's comparison. Some guys, they just come off as car salesmen. And you never get that vibe from Mike Loxley. You never will either. You never will. From day one, he's not changed. You know, my dad late in life taught me about consistency and respecting a man 
who was the same one in year 30 that he was day one when you met him. And that's the way Coach Lockley has always been. We talked a little bit this weekend, and, like, he doesn't – again, he doesn't big time. You know, Jane Franklin either. I can text either one of them and mm-hmm. we have a conversation about whatever. But they – neither one of them big time me, and they're both real. So when you're real, your players will run through the wall for yep. you. And that's the thing about it. And not only that, those two don't see players as ends to a means. Mike Loxley doesn't see his players as an ends to a means. Mike Loxley – sees the opportunity he can help with these kids, how he can turn the community around. He's a hometown guy. He wants to be that guy. He wants to be the person that really helps Maryland surge, right, and put Maryland back in a national place to be when it comes to college football. And I always said, you know, we as coaches always complain. And, again, we're going to – we complain about who gets the job. But but we don't support the guy who get it. Like, to me, I'm saying to all fellow coaches of – <clears throat> of this area and who look like me. Now, we complain we don't get the job. Now, let's send him players to make sure he can keep the job. Hmm. How about we do that? Hmm. Hmm. That's, oh, boy, that's how powerful. We, how about we do that? Right. And if it ever comes to a player of mine or someone I know that I'm always going to help you Coach want Lossie. You wanted to go oh, to Mike Lossie, yeah, yeah. Oh, 100%. Because yeah, I know he's right? going to be taken care of. Coach Lockley's going to well, do Well, this is the unspoken part. Like, we don't have to We don't have to pussyfoot around it. We can say, like, this is – there, and maybe we can tie this into the basketball conversation. Mm-hmm. We know. We, we're watching it with Brian Flores right now in the NFL. <laughs> Black coaches do not get the same opportunities. Yes. You, you can be as mad about that as you want. You can scream about it on the Internet. Yes. Well, it shouldn't matter what color your skin. It, it, stop. You're just embarrassing yourself. We know. This is a statement of fact that black coaches don't get the same opportunities. Mm-hmm. Well, here there's a black coach that's gotten this opportunity at Maryland, and the people that know him think the world of him. Like, it, no way is, 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 is fake. In no way is disingenuine. And your point now, okay, well, if I'm a black coach, if I'm somebody here, I need to support yes. this man, yes. let him succeed, because it might be the way that more yes. black coaches get their opportunities. Exactly. And, and I, I'll tell you one of the stories we had. I went to his clinic. and I'll try to real quick with this. So I went to his clinic, and there's, what, 200 coaches there, okay? None of the guys speaking to myself and, and are you from DeLon Parrish is the yeah, coach of course. Yep, absolutely. I coached DeLon when he was a young you okay. know, young pup. Help, you know, help. He was one of those kids. They weren't going to have a team if they didn't have a coach. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now he's probably the best football coach in the state of Maryland, right? No five, question. Five oh, my God. No doubt, right? Know? No doubt. He's the guy that uh, AJ wanted to be like because, you know, DeLon was at my house a lot. So we're sitting at the clinic, the coach's clinic, and it's me and DeLon at the table. Guys are walking by, 150 guys. Nobody speaks. Nobody says anything. Coach Loxley comes in. He's on the phone. He yells across, hey, Mike and DeLon, I'll be over in a second. Let me finish this call. He comes over. He sits with us. We have lunch. And we are talking about recruiting and everything. That next day, every one of those coaches came by, spoke, and tried to sit at the table with us. There was 30 guys at wow. the table. Wow. Why? Why? It wasn't because of me and DeLon. Right. And I'm not stupid. Yeah, right. You know what I mean? You sure? It, it you sure yeah, it wasn't? It wasn't sure? me and DeLon because yeah. DeLon had kicked half of their ass and I was just trying <laughs> to get in. But it wasn't me and DeLon. But they wanted to be there because of Mike Loxley. Now, so in a sense, if you're willing to use a grown man like myself and pretend to be my friend so you can get close to Coach Loxley, what are you doing to our kids? Hmm. 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 What are That's you doing point. to our children? Hmm. At the end of the day, what using, are you doing you're to using I, them? Thank you, you. Mm-hmm. thank you. And 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 unfortunately, we I I'll say it. And on the other side, we take it sometimes. We fall for the okie doke. We fall for the the uh, recruiting, the dating. Like, right, you know, right. And it's, I say it's, all, it's it's nice to be wanted. Yeah, it's nice to yeah, right. Yeah, you, but you tell me I'm pretty. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. But the thing is this: if you know every coach your kid had, and you don't know the teachers then you're sending the wrong message. <sighs> wow, that's good. That's good, man. That's good. We have parents who don't go to back-to-school night and couldn't tell you that, that teacher is what they say, but they know every coach. And he, Coach Loxley don't give you that opportunity. And, and like with Miss Miss Free, uh, Miss Free, Gloria, yeah. Gloria, so she would call, call me and say, you know, your son's something special. Like, it really is. I really enjoy him. Like, I she hate, didn't call me and say nothing we, about football. I hate that we always say nice things about him, by the way. we got to <laughs> stop that. I need to stop that. I mean, you know how many times I would try to get somebody to say no. something bad about him? No, she this loved This man. Him. And every time they had the, fa- the parents weekend, you know, we would go. And then she's like, Ralph's going to take some guys up there. Look, um, here, you just mingle. You're a coach. 
just mingle. Everybody loves you. Come on, just mingle. All the parents, they would love to meet you. Just mingle. Uh, Ralph Nim's gone. Come on, you do it. I'm like, yes, ma'am. Whatever for the family because she's, you know, they're great people. Yep. And she was concerned about AJ as a student. Like, I never, and that other guy, we know that story. There's enough time in the world not really, for that. Not really worth it. Nope. Not really worth nope. that conversation. Nope. Not worth that conversation whatsoever. Not at all. Man, I, I'm ready to sign up for you right now. I'm ready to send my <laughs> seven-year-old to go. Are you sure you're out of coach? You sure you're not going to go back? Hey. And, like, my seven-year-old is going to be eligible here in a few years. I'm my ready wife. I'm ready to send him your way. <laughs> my wife told me last night watching the All-Star game, she's like, you sure you want to be a principal? I'm like, yeah, why? She's like, I loved it when you were a head coach and you were a basketball coach. She's like, you sure you don't want to do it again? Man. I was like, no, baby. Man, <laughs> man. By the way, how about Steph Curry last night? I, I, look, again, I don't. the All-Star game is not for me, right? Just because I'm not typically into the, the, the spirit of just you know running around and, and playing basketball for the sake of it. But, yo, and that, that stretch in the third quarter where it was just, let's just see what shots he can hit, mm. where they're like, all right, every time down, we're just going to give you the ball. And it killed me because I bet the under. I ki it killed <laughs> me. It killed me. Bro, I, I did some research on it, and it was very close. It was extraordinarily close. Because they went to that 24-point mm -hmm. thing in the fourth quarter, the numbers have actually been down. So I thought it was the smart money was on betting the under, and I was this close. I was this close to hitting it, unfortunately, in the end. Uh, I think it was 123, and the number was 121, or, or not 121, uh, uh, three. It was 323, and the number was 321, or something mm -hmm. like that. It killed me. But yeah, that was fun. That was. I, I, you all can say whatever you want about Steph Curry. There will never be a night in my life no. where it, my night will be better by watching Steph Curry shoot a basketball. Man, like just a freaking joy, dude, to watch that dude do what he does. I got everything I wanted. I saw a great shooter. Saw LeBron finish. You saw Embiid, you saw Giannis, like they showed their abilities. I think it's the best All Star game in at least twenty years. Wow, wow! I mean, I again, it's hard for me to compare because it's not the All Star game is not for me. I want, <laughs> I want competition. I want to watch, dude. I I watch like every Phoenix Suns game now because like the the fact that I get to watch Chris Paul play. Mm. I am so mad at myself for not realizing. I did not nearly respect Chris Paul enough Shoot. until he arrived in Phoenix. I did not give him. I got to see him when he was over at Morgan State that night with LeBron and Melo and all them. But, like, I never gave Chris Paul his due because mm -hmm. he would get under your skin and he would he was that guy. And so you kind of hated him a little bit because of it. My God, it is a delight to watch him play basketball, man. It's un He's 37 years old. Mm -hmm. It's insane watching him do what he's doing, man. It's nuts. All right, Mike Francis is here. Um, we're going to check in with Rob Long here in one minute. Today's show is also brought to you by Glory Days Grill. Love me some Glory Days Grill, the smoky thigh wings, the burgers, the ribs, all delicious. GloryDaysGrill.com is the website. Get your order in. You want to plug the podcast real quick before we go to break? Yeah, yeah, everyone, please. The Odd Coaches Podcast, uh, myself, Dr. Keith Adams, we are uh, – for 25 years, we've had conversations about sports when things happen, so we decided to make a podcast. We just taped our 100th episode. We've had Lamar Barrett, who's an NBA scout on. We've had uh, a couple other people that uh, have played for us and, and big in the community. We're hoping to grow the podcast more. We're on Spotify. We're on Podbean. We're on Amazon. We're on almost everywhere you can, Apple, everywhere you can get it. <clears throat> excuse me, everywhere you can get your podcast, give us a listen. Uh, enjoy us on your ride in. Take us on your lunch break. And uh, like, share, and subscribe. That's awesome. That's awesome. Love that. All right, we'll come back in, chat with Rob Long next. It is Glenn Clark Radio. Sports fans, the wait is over. The all-new FanDuel Sportsbook is now open at Live Casino and Hotel in Hanover, Maryland. This is your chance to win big right in your own backyard. Bet on every sport with self-service kiosks and watch all of the action from the best seat in the house. Make every moment more at the all-new FanDuel Sportsbook at Live Casino and Hotel in Hanover. Please play responsibly. Gambling problem? Please call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit MD gamblinghelp.org that first sip that first bite mm. start your day off right with a delicious breakfast at royal farms choose from a fantastic selection of fresh royal farms breakfast sandwiches and top it off with a rich hot cup of the freshest coffee in the world at royal farms breakfast is available day and night it's the freshest breakfast in the world real fresh real fast royal farms 
After being virtual in 2021, the CIAA Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament is headed to Charm City this February 22nd through 26th. The CIAA is an event that has become a celebration of family, culture, and accomplishments that uplift and strengthen the African-American community. See the excitement in person as some of the best college basketball in the country comes to Baltimore's Royal Farms Arena with the CIAA Men's and Women's Conference Tournament. Get your tickets now at CIAA. AA-tournament.org. That's CIAA Tournament.org. The newest edition of Press Box is available now. On the cover, we celebrate the 20th anniversary of Maryland men's basketball's 2002 NCAA Tournament Championship. As Gary Williams reflects on how the program rose from the ashes of NCAA sanctions to the pinnacle of the sport, and why his perspective of the title run has changed now, two decades later. Plus, Juan Dixon, Lonnie Baxter, and the rest of the team relive the moments that ultimately led them to cutting down the nets in Atlanta. Press Box is available for free at over 500 area locations, including 60 Royal Farm stores. And you can always find the entire edition, as well as the best daily coverage of the Orioles, Ravens, and Terps at PressBoxOnline.com. The Toyota Tacoma comes in a wide range of models and trim lines. You can choose the perfect Toyota to reflect your unique personality and driving habits. Check out buyatoyota.com for deals on new Tacomas from your local Toyota dealer today. If you miss anything, don't forget that you can find whole shows later on Spotify, Apple, or Amazon Podcast. It's Glenn Clark Radio. All right, back in here on GCR. Mike Francis is in studio with us this morning, uh, my friend, and uh, a man, again, who's accomplished just about everything in this world. This is your boy that we're talking to now, right? Yeah. Like You love this guy. I love Rob. I'm a big John Carroll fan today. I want to see him. <laughs> That's not true remotely. That's not remotely true, although I actually have a connection to the John Carroll team, but I always root for this guy. Of course, uh, you hear him every morning in the Big Bag Morning Show. Hopefully, there'll be baseball at some point this year, so you'll be able to see him again on Masson. He is our friend, our guy, Mr. Rob Long, and he's back with us here on GCR. What's going on, dude? What's going on, Glenn? Who's oh, there with me? Oh, we there? Oh, hello. What's going on, man? Can, can you hear me? Yeah, I got you now. I got you so now. Who's, who's there with you? I didn't hear. Oh, it's, uh, it's Mike Francis is in studio with me this What's morning. What's up, Mike? What's up, baby? <laughs> How are you? I'm well. How you doing this morning? That's good. That's good. Hopefully, I'll be hopefully I'll be better in a couple of hours. Yeah. Good luck this afternoon. So big game today. Where where are the games today? Where are they where are they doing them this year? They got moved this year to Hartford Community College. We used to play at Stevenson, but on Sundays and now it's Monday, a President's Day at Hartford Community College. The uh, four conferences of the IAAM, um, four divisions, I should say, the IAAM. Will play for uh, the uh, titles. All right. So what's well, I mean, really, like you know, handicap it. T- take your coach's hat off. Be an analyst for a second. You gonna win this thing or not? Nah? It's gonna be tough. Um, John Carroll, well coached. Uh, Holly Ishmael. Um, and on top of that, it's hard to beat a team three times in one year. This would be we faced them twice already. Beat them both times. And the second game was a lot closer than the first. We got a big lead against them, and they walked us down. And, you know, we had to hold on to, to win that thing um, uh, against them the second time around. Um, so it, it's going to be it, it's gonna be tough. Uh, this is not going to be an easy one. Um, this is the team that two weeks ago, when we faced them the second time, I told my team, I said, if we get to the championship, we'll face John Carroll. Okay. Because you knew you knew they were going to be a two or three seed, which means they were going to be on the other side of the bracket. You, you just felt that. You felt it. Uh, they played a lot better down the stretch than they did uh, early on. Uh, the one thing we have on us is, you know, I mean, we're, we're I think we're probably a little deeper. Um, but also, I, I think we have a different championship resume. You know, we went out, and Mike will tell you this, you know, right before the playoffs, we went out and played St. Francis, mm-hmm. Polly, and McDonough to get ready for the playoffs. <laughs> it's going to sharpen you a little bit, yeah. I was out tuned up for the playoffs, you know, going out there and playing some monsters. And, and it's what I call, I think if you win a championship, you got to build a resume. So we, we did that to build our championship resume. We faced some adversity in the semifinals, again, playing a team for the third time that we had beaten twice already. And we were down, guys, eight points in the second half. And we came back to win by nine. But, again, like I told them, that having, that was our first probably signature come from behind win of the year. I was- and I told the girls also, once again, you got to have one of those if you want to build that championship resume. I, I like everything about your team except for one thing. 
Me. The head coach. That's the uh, only problem, yeah. right? <laughs> like, if we could get Mike over to coach the game today, I'd feel great about your chance. <laughs> I love you, bro. You know. <laughs> I, Glenn, that's super cool of you, though. I'm, 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 I expect that. Yeah, right? I mean, what, what else am I supposed to say, dude? You know how this before. goes. You know how this goes. Hey, yeah, coach, that's, what, that's what friends are for. Yeah. Coach, I owe you an apology. I sent you a message too late that night. We were at Jimmy's that night. Remember? Oh, Glenn? yeah, yeah. I sent Coach a message, but it was it was kind of late. I was oh, hoping he man. Could this oh, we had a great yeah. night. What a great night that was. <laughs> My God, that was a great night, man. Yeah, well, I, I, heard, I heard all about it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's cool because I didn't text him at all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've been talking all morning. You know we've been talking about the Juwan thing. And actually, it's funny because, uh, you know, you know, Jeremy normally comes on at this time, and, and Jeremy's off doing you know, national radio. I think he's in a star today. Mm. So it was cool because I saw Mike say this morning on Twitter that he was hoping to hear from you this morning, so I figured this would work out the right <laughs> way when I knew he was coming in studio. Your, your reaction to all of it, and specifically when you hear somebody say, well, this is it, we should do away with, with handshake lines after games, what what is your response to that, Rob? Uh, you should act accordingly. Right, it's something that's always been done. Why do we? Why why is it when people mess up, we say get rid of it? Mm. You know what I mean? We don't we don't hold people accountable. We hold rules accountable. And I mean, it's people who disobey the rules. They can't follow the rules. There's nothing wrong with the rules. There's nothing wrong with people who can't obey the rules. Shaking hands at the end of the game is it's not my favorite part of the game, and that's that's not. Sometimes when I get it handed to me, you know, it, it, it's what, what you're teaching. Me. We're coaching kids. Mm -hmm. You know, these guys are still – they're grown men. There they are. But in the grand scheme of things, when we know them outside of basketball, what do we call what, – what do you call a 20-year-old? A kid. That's what you call them. You know, so these are still kids. I think – yeah, he, he called Kim English a, a kid, and Kim's 30 now. I apologize <laughs> to Kim English. I remember he used to come to my gym. His cousin played for me, and he was always at our workouts. So I still call him kid. I, I apologize to him, though. I know he's a full-grown man. Yeah, though. right. <laughs> I know. Yeah, but just, to me, we make so we, it's like, okay, there's something wrong with the rule. No, it's nothing wrong. You know, just it's something wrong with how – there's something wrong with you. What, what, what shaking hands at the end of the game does for me, it, it 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 decompresses me, mm. you know what I mean? Especially after a tough loss, because now I got to get my act together and go over there and shake that man or shake that woman's hand after after, after losing to them. And I have an issue with it because we we had an issue with that on Thursday. You know what I mean? I just I don't I, shake my hand. Good game. Now go on about your business. You don't have to like me, <laughs> but you, we're, we're trying to teach values. Yes, sir. And and is it something that I like? Not my favorite thing. Not my favorite part of the game. But it, it, it makes everyone take a step back and reevaluate what just happened. And now you go accountable to go shaking somebody's hands. Jawan Howe is a problem. You know, it's not his first rodeo over this. You know what I mean? Now you go back and look at the whole thing with Mark Turgeon a little bit differently, don't you? You look at the whole thing a little bit differently now. So, I, in, in my opinion, uh, you know, they're 14 and 11 right now. I don't think they're going anywhere. Uh, this would not be a bad time to part ways with Jamal Howard. Wow. Mm. Wow. Okay. Well, let's Hang on. Rob Ooh. Long's with us because we, we will separate <laughs> there. Both Mike and I are in agreement. I think that's over the top. I think that's a, I, I, I get it, right? Like, it, it was a bad look. There's no doubt it was a bad look. To, Mike made the point earlier. I don't know exactly what was said. I don't know if there I, – I, I have no defense of – and, Rob, you can speak this. I have no defense of being angry about a timeout, right? There's I cannot defend that no. in a million years, dude. Like, you, you – this is basketball, man. Like, you know, the guy calls a timeout because you guys are trying to still play basketball at that point. And so he's going to still keep trying to play basasketball with whoever's on the floor, and he's going to use that to teach him. You're not going to – I feel no sympathy to you because the other team called a timeout when you were getting your ass kicked. None. But I do think that the ability – Mike and I both agree. The suspension is going to be for the rest of the year for sure. There's no doubt about that. And then if he wants to go – they say, look, you know, we want to institute – you got to take anger management classes, something like that. And, and he wants to do it because he wants to continue being the basketball coach, I, I think he has that right to say it, it, this is not something that should immediately disqualify him from ever coaching again, in my mind. No, it's not, it's not ever, ever. That's a long, long, tough word, but this is not the first time he's had a bad look with the University of Michigan. It's not the first time as a coach. It's not his first time. I mean, why is it over the top? Over the top was that right hook he threw to the coach. That was over the top. Over the top was when he had to be – he had to be held back from Mark Turgeon from his bench and three other coaches. That's over the top. It's not the first time for him. Anger management, well, you should have did that after the first time. Why, do, we, why do I have to make you do anger management because he went to this point? Nobody owes him anything. 
okay, I'll agree that they don't owe it to him. I agree with that. But I think – I know it's been a disappointing year, but I think – Jawan Howard – Oh. He owns the university. He owes the University of Michigan, and and I'm sorry. This is to me. It's, again, it's not his first time, guys. I agree with you, Coach. But we also uh, look at it from a standpoint that uh, maybe they offered him, you know, like uh, counseling or something for the Mark Turgeon thing, and I could see him you know, being let go, especially if an alumna, if the alum come at, you know, the AD and say, hey, this is not a good look. We don't want this around, as Glenn said earlier, being 14-11. You know, uh, I could see them getting rid of him, but I think it's just, you know, that would be a little bit over the top. Yeah. That's all. That's all I'm at. That's yeah. all. That's all I'm at. And I get it. You're right. It was over the top. It was over the top of his reaction. There's no question about that. And they'll probably have to investigate. I Rob, remember the morning after the Miles Garrett thing a year ago, right? Like, I don't, I don't remember what you said about it, but I remember having this feeling in my mind, like, something else had to happen here. I refuse to believe that Miles Garrett just started bashing Mason Rudolph in the head with a helmet or, or whoever it was because he just lost his mind. Like, I feel like there's got to be more to the story than just, I'm mad about the timeout, I'm going to start swinging here. Like, I feel like something let else me, had let, to happen there. Let me ask you this. Did Miles Garrett have any issues before that, Mason Rudolph? No, no, not that we knew of. Right. Okay. Not that we knew of. So because of that, because of that, I'm willing to say something else had to happen. Okay. Dewan Howard has had issues before. Okay. You... So for me, nothing else has to happen. Okay. You know what I mean, I'm not, I'm not inclined to give him. I'm more, I was more inclined to give him the benefit of the doubt when, when it was Turgeon. Right. That was the first time I saw that. Mm. I was, I was that guy. Well, I don't know what else was saying, but twice in a row. I mean, come on. I mean, number one, let's start off with the audacity that he has the question why I'm calling a timeout. Who, who are you? Yeah. That that alone is enough. That alone is enough to me to rate, hey, that's a, that's a warning flag right there. You are that upset that I called a timeout that you want to approach me? But keep in mind, he swung at the first coach, uh, at the assistant coach, but he had issues and, and, and a shouting match with the head coach before this all started. Let's look at the whole thing. We're just taking this one thing to get in the box like it's the only thing that happened. There's a series of events that led up to him swinging at someone. It's not in a, it's not in a, it's not in a vacuum here. There's a series of events that led up to that. They he had enough time. He had enough time to settle down, and he didn't. He still didn't settle down. At the end of it, he still wasn't settled. All of this happened. Same thing with Demar Derozan. He was still upset after the game in which he was ejected. He was still upset after the game. So none of these times, all these things happen, and he never settled down when he had an opportunity to. We've all been angry. We all have. But there comes a time when we settle down. When people separate you from someone else, that's your moment to settle down. Mm. He was separated from the head coach, and he continued with the assistant coach by swinging on him. I don't know what else you need to see here. I hear you. I hear you. I, Rob, I hear you. And, guys, by the way, if that's internally, if they've said, we've also seen these other things, right? Like, we've got other things that we've seen that maybe other the public hasn't, then they'll probably make that decision. You're probably right. They'll probably say, if we got a bunch of if, – if we've known this to be a pattern mm -hmm. and what you're seeing publicly is the same thing that we see privately, then they probably will. They'll probably use this as an opportunity to say, it's a bummer because we think he can coach a little bit and, you know, he's, a, he's an alum, but – we, we can't. We can't do it anymore, right? You're probably right about it, and they'll probably make that decision. Um, it's the University of Michigan, guys. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's the University of Michigan. I'm not a Wolverine fan by no stretch, any stretch of the imagination, no. but it's Michigan. You know what I mean? There's some programs that have to be – they have to hold themselves to a different level. Mm -hmm. And Michigan is one of those programs. You can't do that at Michigan. It's, you, you can't do that. Do you, do now, again, the first time, benefit of the doubt. Now, this time, nah, it's a pattern. Would you be willing to? By the way, they also love that the receipts have come for him. By he, the, I've got there are two examples. Uh, a game against Indiana, they're up 16 with 55 seconds left. He called a timeout. Mm. A game against Purdue last week, they're up 16 with a minute and a half left. He called a timeout. Like, yeah, that's a come on, Chief. Come on, man, that's really bad. Rob, would you be willing to share? And I'm gonna ask Mike for the same. Mike's told a few of them this morning already. Would you be willing to share? I know you never swung at anybody. <laughs> but do you have a most embarrassing interaction that you've had with another coach at some point? One that you afterwards had to be like, yo, I had to be the one that had to send the text because I, I realized I, 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 I kind of screwed that one up. No, not with coach. I've had embarrassing moments with refs. Okay. And, and 
and I've I had to be the one that you know I found the email address or whatever, and I apologized to them, um, you know. But it, it it never led to. I've never been ejected from a game. Um, I've never been asked to leave the building. <laughs> I mean, like, so like to keep just, it that way. It was, just, it, it was not my yeah. It was just not my finest moment. You know, I had to get teed up and 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 told to sit down by my bench and things like that. But I, I've never I've never been ejected. I don't plan on that happening today either. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, it's just it, it's just again, there's, it comes a time where you have to calm down. You can't continue to go on and it's it just calm down. And I, I'm with you. I will say this though, I'm not a Michigan fan, but and I know it doesn't sound this way, but I am a Jawan Howard fan. Mm. I'm a huge Jawan Howard fan. That doesn't matter. I don't make my decisions based on my fandom. I make my decisions based on what's right. And right now, that's a bad look on top of a bad look from last. This just happened. It's not like we're digging in the crates from four years ago. This just happened less than a year ago. It was last March that this thing happened with 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 uh, Turgeon. Less than a year ago. You know, so it's not like we're digging in the crates and finding, you know, the, the, the wax records here. This is <laughs> this is fresh. This is a fresh situation that to me shows a pattern. And the next time to me I look at the two, these two incidents and think, man, the next time could be worse. Mm. That's my fear. All right. So we because saw this time was this time was worse than the first time. I mean, there's no doubt. This is bad. This is bad. There's no question of that whatsoever. All right, let, let's do this. We saw the the halftime thing last night in the All Star game with the top seventy five, which was great, right? It was it was wonderful. Right, right. It was tremendous. Tracy McGrady is not out there. Allen Iverson on Friday night did this fun versus thing with Tracy. By the way, I don't know if you did you guys watch the music Soul Child Anthony Hamilton versus last week? It was unbelievable. Yes. It, yeah, it was unbelievable. Yes. It was unbelievable. Yeah, it was. So they do this fun basketball versus thing on Friday night where they're showing uh, highlight clips. It was a cool concept, right? Like it was. A, I, I dug it. At one point, Iverson goes off. How the F is Tracy McGrady not on the NBA's all-time top 75 players list? For what it's worth, for some reason it seems like Anthony Davis has been the guy that's been most come at about being someone who's on the list mm-hmm. that doesn't deserve to be. It's a couple others. <laughs> so, so I've got the list up. You can give me a couple of the other ones if you want. Should Tracy McGrady, <laughs> Rob, I'll start with you. Should Tracy McGrady have been on the all-time 75 list and not say Anthony Davis? Well, you want me to compare, I'll say I'll take da- uh, uh, McGrady over Davis because McGrady was healthy longer, but I don't think either one of them should be on. I think 75 is too much. You know, you can't be elite to have 75. When they did 50, that was great. But, you know, what next, 25 years from now doing 100? I just, that's just too many. I don't think I don't think either one of them should be considered – all-time greats, but when you're having 75 people, you tend to, you're going to stretch because they're not 75 all-time greats. Interesting, interesting. And the list is actually 76. Yeah, they, right. They cheated. They had to put a, they had to put a tie in at the end because they couldn't get it down to 75. Uh, yeah, I mean, how can you have how can you have 75 or 76 all-time greats in only 75 years? That's saying you have an all-time great a year? No, you don't. Yeah. No, you don't. I was stunned by how high on the list like Giannis was already. I get it. I Me think too. Giannis is unbelievable. Like Me I think too. he's amazing. But really, you think he's already one of the forty best players in NBA history already? Like if 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 the world ended today, you think he's one of the forty greatest players in the history of the sport? Um, I'm not there. I get it. I think you're projecting a little bit. I think you think he's so good already that think about how good he's going to continue to be for some time. I just thought that well, was first a bit. Of all, Glenn- First of all, Glenn, that's ridiculous. The world ended the day when we really think about who's the greatest. All right, <laughs> all right. All right. thank you. If thank basketball you. Basketball ended you. today. Hang on a second. You say that. I don't know if it, if if, if, if <laughs> right. If, I I brought this up. Um, not not at the FanDuel Sportsbook, which we love, but on another site that I would use in the past to bet before Maryland got their act together. This is not a joke. There was a bet you could make on who would win the next war. Oh wow. Humans or aliens. How you would you could, cash in? That's the thing. You could put money on it. And, how, how, you, how, you, and that's, how could you win? I remember Jeremy and I having this debate <laughs> because we both saw that humans were big favorites, and we were like, there's no way. How would you ever establish humans as the favorites in the human versus alien war? And we realized it was because 
You couldn't cash in if no. you bet on the aliens. You, you had to bet humans or you'd never be able to cash in on the bet. Boy, that's, that's gambling. Right yeah, right. <laughs> I remember saying that that's moment. Called, that's, I, called, that's called a gambling problem. <laughs> <laughs> but I remember that being the moment like, how are you keeping this from being legal in the state of Maryland? How could you possibly not want us <laughs> to have the right to bet on who's going to win the human alien war? Right? I tried to clean it up. I didn't want to use the word degenerate, but that's definitely that's definitely a gambling yeah, issue. You definitely but have a problem. Some other guys on that list. We had this debate. Okay, take somebody off the list. Well, take somebody off the list, Mike. Yeah, um, Bob Cousy. Really? Yes. One of the great point guards. One of the one-handing, dribbling guys in the world who so could not think- play. I like guys who transcend and can dominate no matter what. Okay. As a coach. That's, I will say this to you, my friend. That's ballsy. I can't disagree <laughs> with you. But well, that's both. Hey, that we had this on our on my podcast. We went through the whole seventy five, and yep. we took the ones that we just you said they this knew for tra- sure they wouldn't transcend. To yes, this. and the ones we knew for sure. And every week for about a month and a half, we started adding to the list, taking people off the list. I think we started with sixty five sure, like sixty surefire guys, and there was fifteen or sixteen we debated about. Y'all not gonna like this one. I debated James Worthy. Why? Why? What's your beef with James Worthy? I, it's just I don't have a beef with him. But you think you he compare, was on a different team? Thank you. Okay. He played with Magic All right. Johnson. All right, I'll listen. I'll listen. Like, like you got to look at who they play with, too. Like, shit, I can play with Magic. <laughs> I can get a couple open I got, shots. I got one for you, then, that you're not going to like. Okay. Rod yes, Rod we agree, Coach. We agree. All he could do was dunk. Wow. That's it. That's it. It's dribble with one hand. Yes. And remember, that's that, the... remember that play? Remember that play? Clyde's wrestling with left with, with his left hand baseline. Because I don't. No. <laughs> hey, the next time will be his first time, Rob. Yeah, I, don't, I don't remember him going left hand baseline. Wow. No, I don't. Yeah. I, I think my girls have better handles than him. Yes. I do. I don't. I don't. I don't think he had, he had no handles, man. Okay, so you you have no thought to this is the Babe Ruth argument, right? Like the argument that's made amongst baseball people. Is if Babe we, we can't Babe Ruth's not one of the greatest baseball players of all time. If he played today, he'd be, be terrible. He couldn't be Chris Davis today. He he couldn't match well, up. He had, to, he had to eat. He had to eat right and not drink all night. Yes. But one of the things that we know about baseball, also back in the beginning of his career, how many of those home runs did he hit back then? The ground rule doubles because you remember when the ball bounced over the fence, it used to be a home run. That's yeah. right. That's right. And the and look, they, 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 he wasn't. He didn't have to play uh, play against black players, right? Like, there's all sorts of things that we use he in didn't order play to make against this. Black players, Latino players, uh, yep. uh, Asian players. He, didn't play. he played against the best white players in in the world. But, that's not. But do we that, acknowledge? Do we say? Because this is a similar argument to me about I. E. Bob, Bob Cousy. That's the Bob Cousy <laughs> argument, though, right? Like. If we if you say Bob Cousy, four teams in the league, six teams I, in the league, but it's still what the league was. It still existed. It was but still a, still it wasn't the league now. But the, but, but, but the but the 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 title, the category is all time though. Yes, you can't say he's all time if he's only great in his era. Yes, that's why I say he, you got to dominate across. Tim Duncan would be, play well yeah, now. Sure, I don't disagree you know, with that. Tim Duncan would be. You gotta transcend your era. Yes. And that's why you can't have seventy five. Yes. They don't have seventy five people who transcend their era. Man, it should have stopped at fifty. This is this is a hot take. I did not know this yes. was coming this Oh morning. my gosh. I told you we this is a hot we take. We two we were two months in on our podcast about this every that's time. Great, man. Wednesday. That's great. Bob Cook. Bob Cousy is no John Stockton. Let's just say that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. hundred <laughs> well, percent. Well, no one's quite as insane no John, as John Stockton. Nobody's going to argue whether John Stockton belongs on this list. Well, he did what he did. He did. There's no John, doubt. Yeah. John Stockton is the. John Stockton belongs on the list. Yes. You know what I mean? It's just there's certain guys, man. You're like, eh, I, I will argue this. Does Dennis Robin really belong on the list? Yes. Ooh. Yes. Oh, I'll go. Yeah, to, yeah, because I'll go to the grave about did, this. What he I, did. I know what you're saying is that you wouldn't put a. Actually, there's a Ben Simmons argument to be made here. You wouldn't play or put a player on the. No, not as one of the greatest. No, stop, stop, stop. I'm not saying he's one of the greatest 75. Calm down. I'm not no, saying no, that. No, no, no. I'm saying in transcending eras, the argument would be you would never put a player on the floor like that that offered nothing offensively right. at this point. You wouldn't but do on, that. But he's on the list. He's but on he's, the list, though. But, but I, I think the point being, we're see, Ben Simmons is making the argument. He offers nothing offensively, and yet. He's still a qualified player. I think that Dennis Rodman could still have a role in basketball today despite not being an offensive player because we acknowledge, Jesus Christ, what he did defensively and rebounding the ball was greater than anybody we ever saw. Okay. All right. I got another one. Oh, God. 
Paul Pierce. Really? Just for the clutch? The, the clutch bad. what? Kevin? He had Kevin with him. I know, but, dude, when he the game was on the line, the, it was Paul Pierce. Probably one of the best point guards who've won championships in oh, multiple man. teams. Like, I, oh, again, man. Rondo doesn't get enough credit. I agree with that. I, I, I am admitting that this is not my lane. All right. But what about Scotty Pippen? Being oh, the- he has to be. Scotty Pippen's one of the greatest players. Yeah, oh. Scotty Pippen has to. Oh, yeah. He Scottie changed. One of the greatest yeah, he he changed the, he, it. He's the best Swiss Army light yes, of sir. all time. Yeah. If he didn't guard Magic, if he didn't guard Magic full court in that yep. series, yep. The, the Lakers probably would have won that, that yep. series. They would have right. turned wanna, it around. I want to go back to Pierce, though. I want to go back to Pierce. Yes, sir. What was In order to be an all-time great, you got to be great at something, don't you? Yeah. He was great at being the guy when Pierce, the game was on the line. Who was Pierce great at? Talking. Well, I know. No, okay. <laughs> No, I don't. I don't agree with that. I don't think Pierce was great at. I think Pierce was a guy to check a lot of boxes. Yes, that's fine. But that doesn't make you an all-time great. Wow. Thank you. Got to be great at something. Wow. Thank you. Wow. What did Paul Pierce do in the follow-up with Rob? What did Paul Pierce do saying. to he dominate? Wasn't, he wasn't transcending that way. He was. I know what you're game. saying. He wasn't a transcendent slasher. He wasn't a transcendent shooter. I'm not. I'm not arguing with that. But I do think on those teams, when somebody needed to make the plays, when the games were on the line, Paul Pierce stood out in that way, in that era, as being one of the great clutch players of a generation. I think he had. Uh, give me his clutch I moment. Think, then. I think he had Kevin Garnett. I, I know he, that's true. Ray Allen who what helped is, him. So is, who do this, you guard? What is his clutch moment? If he was exactly. so clutch, give me his clutch moment. That shot when he was with Coach Washington Owen. at the end of his career. <laughs> Coach Rob, your defensive game planning against the Celtics. Yeah. Who are your first two priorities? It ain't him. Nobody. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. All right. All right. I ain't arguing. I ain't arguing that it Garnett. Okay. I'm not arguing it that Garnett him. and Allen wouldn't be higher on my list. There's no doubt. Both of those dudes, more important, and by, by, nobody would argue about their spot on this list. Ray right? Allen was an assassin. Yes, sir. He was a sniper. Oh, he and was Ray absolutely. Ray Allen was a sniper. Yep. I may I may consider at times the NBA running a boxer one against Ray Allen. Yes. <laughs> wow. I, because I'm, I'm just saying. Wow, I mean that gone. that dude was absolutely can you imagine Ray Allen playing in this era where you can shoot threes more more often? Freedom threes, of movement. Three point shots <laughs> is your offense. Yes. He's, if he play if he played on the Golden State Warriors today. <laughs> man. Remember Steph. Where the ball was being be- moved around with the purpose of shooting the three. Bro, I mean, I love Ray yeah. Allen. I mean, yeah. Let me make that abundantly clear. I freaking love Ray Allen, despite the fact that he went to UConn. I think he was one of the more underrated him. players of his generation. Yes, he was, and so was Rondo. Man. I'm telling you, when Rondo, so Rondo when Rondo came back to the Lakers, they started getting shots they wanted instead of pressured shots at the at the shot clock going off because he was able to get people the ball where they needed to get the ball, positions to score that was good for him. That's when they made the run in the bubble. I think he did the same thing in, in Boston. He was able to get KG the ball when he's supposed to, where he's supposed to. Then we kick it to Ray, and if he got doubled or closed out, he reversed it to Paul, who was wide open. And you're saying that because nobody's guarding him. I mean, he's not on the defensive. I'm not wrong. He's not I know the, you're not wrong. He's not on the defensive scout, coach. I'm still <laughs> mad that Ray Allen chose Big State is really what this comes down to. I'm still mad <laughs> that he went to Big you put, State. You put, your, you put your best on the ball defender against Rondo. <laughs> yes. You put your best big or hybrid defender on Kevin Garnett. Yes, sir. You put your best what? Now you put the other guy. Yes. Paul Pierce. Yeah, you put that guy who might score a little bit and can rebound, but you don't put no, no, nah, you don't put him on the game. Plan. You, 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 know, you know who guards? You know who guards Kevin Garnett? Uh, Paul Pierce. Who's that? The the, the Rudy Gays of the world. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's who's not? They're going to play situational defense at times, but they're not yep. going to play every. Yeah, they get they position. get away with You're just right. being big. Yeah, right. right. And you want to yeah. rest them for the offensive side of the floor. Those are the guys that play defense against Paul. Pierce. Yes. Well, I really hate how compelling you all's argument yeah, is about just, this. I really hate you, you, that. You, it's really bothering me. You have me. to look at this who is, they play with. I'm, another I thought about, Bob McAdoo. Bob McAdoo is a hell of a scorer, though, man. Like, when? Are we talking about hell of a scorer? Are we talking about all time? Exactly, That's man. You can't have 75 because you start – when you have 75 in 75 years, you start letting guys like this in. Yep. They don't belong there. You don't belong in the, this all-time best. Does not belong next to your name, at all, at all. I mean, you go 
brought up Scotty Pippen earlier. Tough, bro. You guys are tough. But that was whoa, 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 that wasn't me. That was Paul. Let me make that abundantly clear. I wasn't going war on Scotty Pippen. That was Paul. That did I that. said I was out of my because, lane yeah. with this one. Yeah, I know. He did. He did. Precursor. There is no Jordan without Scotty. And Pippen. I agree on and, that. I agree about all. that. I agree about that. I am more Big Ten. I mean, though. Jordan. Jordan is the leading scorer in the league without Scotty, but he's not winning six. Nope. Without Scott, he no, win one without. He couldn't win. Well, I <laughs> he mean, win that first one. I don't know. Scott. And by the way, I don't know that he wins the next three without Rodman. Remember, Rod, remember, Scotty yeah. got the migraines in Detroit. They couldn't win then. Oh my God, that's right. right. You see oh, that? that's totally so right. So it wasn't until Scotty was at that level and and Jordan began to rely on his team, like they asked him. Right. He's like, "Who's open, Mike?" Right. And he says, "Steve Kerr's open." Or like he started throwing the ball to other guys, you know, but. That's because he had guys who did their job specifically. But even those guys, and let's look at Steve Kerr right now. He didn't dominate, so he's not on this list. Mm. Mm. You know what I mean? But mm. he was ser- he was serviceable and he did his job. He was very good at it. But I think there's too many guys on the list that were very good yep. guys. And, yes, they and are it, it, very good. But and, and the problem is, Mike, I can't replace them with anybody thank else. Thank you. Too many people on the list. Thank you. What That's about it. what about ISO Joe? I want my man Joe Johnson on there. What? Because he was just a lethal shooter, and I think that he would be in this. I think what? that the game would continue to suit him moving forward. I think your argument about Joe, Joe Johnson would be more and more suited for this style of basketball. Your argument is he didn't do anything. I get that, right? No, he, he really, did. He played. Well, no, he played, yeah. but he didn't accomplish anything. Like, he didn't win something. He didn't dominate. But – it was a See, uh, do- dominate, I got to know that, all right, when we call a timeout, I'm like, look, we're going to get the ball out on the side. Let's get a dribble handoff. You step across on a big step in. We're going to throw it in. And I know I'm going to get two points or two free throws. But didn't he change the game of basketball? I, didn't his style? Basketball became whoa, more. Joe no, Johnson. The foreign more, players. More, I, no, the foreign right, players fine, changed right, the I'll style. listen to that. I'll yeah. listen to that. I'll listen to the argument that's the yeah. foreign players. I'll yeah. listen to that. I'll listen to that. That's what changed it when Nowitzki and all those guys and, you know, they start coming in and yeah. heavy. Yeah, like, I was w- working the hoop group camps, and it went from, like, three rooms of foreign players to a whole yeah, floor right. Everybody, Yeah, 100%, of foreign right? players. If Everybody you, was If you were 6'8 and not from America, yes. Yes, this is what you were doing with your yes. life. Guys, this is the college, way coaches, <laughs> college coaches taking vacations in foreign countries at just at the same yeah. time as the FIBA World Championships <laughs> right. or, or whatever Gonna go spend be. a weekend in a yes. pizza. Gonna yes. go find myself a basketball player. Yes. No doubt, man. All right, Rob, I, I appreciate you, bro. Thank you for doing this this morning. Man, what kind of big game this afternoon uh, up at uh, Hartford Community College? Get up there. That's a big yeah, building, too. And don't, got up and, don't, and, don't talk, and don't talk crap now because I got my point guard in the car and I know where you are. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> love you, brother. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. For, <laughs> thank you. I, I, I think the world of you as a coach, and I'm, I'm rooting. Let's go, Mount Carmel. All right. Let's, let's there, go. There you go. Thanks a lot. Hey, all good right, luck, guys. coach. Congrats on the season. Good thanks, luck today. Thanks, coach. All right. Rob Long checking in with us here on GCO. I love that dude. That was fun, man. Um, yeah, he's tough, dude. He's tough. But I mean, you we're coaches. Like we know. It's, I get it. I we get know it. What good is, and we know good to every. Like I tell my kids, like good. What's good? Good to you and good to me is two different things. So I understand the the argument is there aren't really seventy five no. eternally great players. Fine, exactly. But they've got a seventy fifth year anniversary. So what are they supposed to do? Hey, it's their seventy fifth anniversary. We're going to announce the top forty two mm-hmm. players in basketball mm-hmm. history. Like they. They're doing what they're doing, right? How about right? the top 75 teams? Well, they just name all the 75 champions, wouldn't they? Yeah. But, <laughs> but That's what again, they would do. But but there's three, at least three Laker teams that would be top teams, right? And then that Bulls, because of their six championships, there's at least three of them. That the Warriors team that only lost nine games and didn't win. Thank you. That's my point. How about you do that as a team instead of doing individuals? Because I, I'm sorry, like – this list being what it is, no, 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 no. We and if you guys go back on the I Coaches podcast, you'll see. Just look and see our debates. Our wind me up Wednesdays. We talk about basketball, all levels, college, NBA, high school, everything. And this list is not, 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 not. This says not seventy five transcending, as Coach Rob Long says, is not seventy five transcending players. I agree that it's not. They're not all transcending. Like I agree with that. At the same time, I still feel as though. I'm a big, I, you know what, you know what this really is, Mike. I'm a big tent. Like when people, when we do the Hall of Fame bit, mm-hmm. right? I, to me, if it's something where I'm like, it's really close, I'm good with you getting in, right? Like mm-hmm. if you're really close, I'm good with it, right? Because it's a celebration. It's a celebration of what's the point of this thing's existence. The point is, I'm gonna take my kids someday, 
and we're gonna go see it and i got no problem celebrating guys that i really enjoyed watching play right so mm-hmm. if it's that close and we're squinting i'm typically more often than not gonna say i think you should be in right and some people would say i'd stretch that like for example we talk a lot whenever we do the baseball hall of fame kenny lofton fell off the ballot in a minute mm-hmm. i think kenny lofton's a hall of fame baseball player i think he was that great i agree like i loved me some kenny lofton mm-hmm. watching that dude play he was probably the first you know everybody was in love with griffey so i don't i kind of ignore griffey but as far as like opposing players mm-hmm. he was like the first guy i really fell in love with right like i adored watching kenny lofton play baseball and so to me like if i was taking my kid up to cooperstown i don't know why i'd be doing that but like at some point i happen to be up there be. we go over we go over to the baseball hall of fame I'd love to walk by and say, dude, I'd like to tell you about what it was like watching Kenny Lofton play baseball. I'd like to tell you about how much effing fun it was, what a joy it was to watch that dude do insane things. So I'm probably more of a big tent guy when it comes to these conversations, right? Like, mm-hmm. you're not wrong. We can separate. We talk about this, too. You can separate Hall of Fame from the greatest of the great. Like, we all know there's ten guys that are the greatest of the great, right? Like, and then there's uh, other guys that got into the Hall of Fame. We are all we're capable as individuals of understanding that. Mm-hmm. If you tell me you got to make a list of 75, like, okay, make a list of 75 because you're trying to get some pub out of it. You're trying to get guys like us to talk about it on a Monday morning and and get some run from it. Make a list of 75. We'll yell about it. I'm I'm totally fine with that. We all know there's a difference between Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And Anthony Davis, like we all understand that there's a difference between those guys. Like we're capable as adults of understanding that, but yet we can still put them on the same list. That's sort of my, I don't get offended by the idea of, hey, the number 75, we're just going to put 75 guys on the list. We know they're not all made equal. And they couldn't even do it. That's true, right. They had to put 76. (laughs) The Athletic made a list too, right? The Athletic came out with their list last week, didn't they? I feel like they put out a list last five. The Athletic, NBA, 75. Yeah, they put out a list too. And I remember seeing their list and thinking, like, boy, there's a couple on there that jumped out at me. Hang on a second. Uh, no, that's, a, that's annoying. They don't just put the list out. Come on, man. All right, never mind. We're not going to spend any time with that. They had Worthy. Uh, no, that's somebody's ballot. Never mind. All right, thank you. Thank you for I nothing. Alice English. Yeah, right? I'm like, what? Like, <laughs> I mean, he's a Hall of Famer. He, yeah, was a, he was a capable scorer. He was... He was. I, he was a capable scorer. He was a nice player. I like Alex English. But 75. I know. I know. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Well, hour number two in the books. Today's show also brought to you by Simply the Bets. Um, that returns tomorrow. Uh, no, Wednesday. Wednesday morning, 1130 a.m. Brought to you by the FanDuel Sportsbook at Live Casino and Hotel. Do it every Wednesday at 1130. Simply the Bets right here. Uh, I feel like, because we're going to come back in and get a tidbit too, but wrap up the show because it's already we're already into overtime at this point. <laughs> um, that's how things have gone. I feel like there was something else that we, you and I had talked about a couple weeks ago that we wanted to cover. Yeah. And I, I, whew, we talked about the Merlins. I'm trying to think. I know. I swear to God, like three weeks ago, I, we were like, we're talking about this. And we just never really got to it. Oh, my gosh. Eh. Whatever. We, we talked about a lot. We covered. Blame Jawan Howard for this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jawan Howard really torpedoed yeah, yeah. everything we could do. Rob was tough on Jawan, too, right? Yeah, like Rob, Rob came for Jawan. Yeah. I get it. And again, I think I'll come back to this. I don't think it's impossible that he could end up getting fired. But I think it'll be based on what he's been like away from the floor. Yeah, that we don't know about. Right. There might I, be, and what Rob was saying earlier about his resume. What has his resume been on campus, in the program? What that speaks volumes to what we don't see. What we don't see could add to, you know, and he could end up here. If five. they've if they've put up with a lot of that yes. stuff and they've been frustrated by it privately, yeah. and you know they're like, look, man, he's he's won enough. We're not we're not going to rock the boat here. They could absolutely say, well, now that this has happened again, pup, that's it. That's I just, it. I just don't like everybody blaming him for it. I just don't. I can't. I mean, uh, call me old school. Call. Me Call me whatever you want, but like to me, it seems like he was trying to walk away. He kept going, and dude grabbed his arm, and like, I, don't grab my arm. I, I'm, I, I don't disagree with that. I still don't think don't, that it, it doesn't justify escalating no, to slapping somebody. But right. Don't, number one, don't grab my arm. Number two, did that assistant coach say something to one of the kids? Because, I want to know that, right? You know, and we don't know it. We probably w- never will know it. And as I said before, like I'm not condoning what he did, but if there ever is a time, don't come for my kids. As a coach, that's our job. We, you don't come for my kids. I won't come for yours. That goes back to Coach Crimmins. I coach my team. Yep. Right? Yep. So uh, and I can't worry about what you do, but I know you're not going to disrespect my players. Yep. Yeah, yep. you got to have self-control. 
True. Uh, especially in, in in the spotlight at a big program like that, you you got to have self control. I'm on, I'm on Rob's side with this one. I think he does get fired personally. I think mm-hmm. that that it, it, you you mentioned Bobby Knight earlier in the show, Glenn, and it, it, people like that they don't just stop doing yeah. those things. And if it happens again, you have egg all over your face because you didn't deal with this when you needed to deal with it. So self control wise, did that coach from Michigan who said something to the kid shouldn't he have self control? They they should all have self control. The whole thing is, so is, is should, just a, and that's why I'm saying Juwan should not be the only one at blame here. Yeah. Oh and no, I, I don't anyone, think he is. But no, no. But the way everybody's talking about, like I said this morning, Jay Billis. I get up five in the morning. I, Jay Billis on Twitter. Uh, uh, Rex Ch- Rex Chapman on Twitter. Like the first thing, everybody's rocking Juwan. Uh, um, uh, this morning I'm coming in. He used to be on the show with Rob and him. Um, Jerry. Jerry, first thing he says, I'm listening to him coming in. Oh, Jawan Howard has horrible. It's not a bad Jerry. I've heard worse Jerry's. You know I mean? like, I've heard worse. No, so, it's, so it, like, he's like, it's him, and no one is saying we should investigate this. No one is saying why would he do that. No one's saying that. All they're saying is Jawan is wrong. But I will promise you, sure as I'm fat, black, and ugly, <laughs> if you don't put your hands on him, none of this happens. You let him walk by. Yeah, that's the point. So you can't get somewhere t- unless something starts. It. So that's my point. So I I hear you, but that and goes that goes back to my thing with my seven year old, right? Like I true, I don't, but I, I don't. who started the thing is right. I I I, I, w- I know what you're saying, mm-hmm. and I absolutely my m- the first thing I'm doing is I need more information. Right. I need to know more saying. about. I need to know more about. I, and this is why I don't like doing the hot take thing, right? right. I, I just don't. I, it's difficult. It's hurt me in my career. You far, have more success if you just say whatever and, mm-hmm. and deal with the repercussions later. I'd like to think that we're – this is the John Stewart argument, right? Like, I, I think it's hurting America. I'd like for us to be a bit more of a civilized society. Yes. Yes. And when we do that, I'd like for us to know more about the things that we're talking about before we just say things. Thank like, you. I would like for us to be able to have a bit of a grasp of it. At the end of the day, I there's I, there's nothing that I can come around to that says this makes it okay right. that you slap. There's nothing True. that can happen. He should be – and he should be punished. I'm right. not defending there's, that. There's no – Absolutely, shouldn't just go straight to him about what happened. Let's right. let's let's get let's have the conversation. Right. Let's find out all the layers to it. If if you called a player on his team something, mm-hmm. again, it's not going to make it okay. Not it's not going to make it so that like you go without punishment. But my opinion is going to be far different mm-hmm. when I sit down to talk about it. And frankly, if I'm the athletic director and I have to defend it to somebody, if somebody else comes to me and says you didn't fire Howard over that, I'm going to say you don't know about this. Yes, you don't know about what happened in that moment and why it wasn't okay and we still suspended him yes. and we still told him he had to do anger management and all those things. I am in way a, a far different position if somebody on his team, they called him boy or something worse than that, Shh. right? Like if something like that occurred, yeah. then it's going to be a far different conversation that we're going to have. Still, as we keep going back to, does not absolve you of responsibility, mm-hmm. does not absolve you of punishment, but it's it's relevant to the conversation to just say... <laughs> Jawan Howard is blank or blank or blank or blank. I, I get it. I get where you're operating from. I get the evidence that you're working with. But I'd like to know a little bit more before I comfortably just say that. Yes, it, it, it falls back on Jawan. You were saying nobody's looking at the other coach. Well, again, that's Jawan Howard's fault because he's the one who decided he needed to hit somebody. If everything else happened and you take away the slap, they're probably looking at both sides equally. But one person slapped somebody and the other person did but nobody's looking at the – he tried to walk by. He tried to ignore yeah. it. And the guy put his arm out, grabbed his arm. You saw – like you said, you mm-hmm. saw my uh, uh, my film like it was water. Yeah, there's a pruder, yeah, yeah 100%. Like so, he, I mean, he stuck his arm out on him, grabbed his arm, stopped, and then he tried to step over, and he slid over in front of him again. And like, you, you – what? wait a minute. At some point, I'm not your son. I'm not your property. Right. I am not your assistant coach. I'm not. I, and by the way, all and of that – I disagree with him. I have an issue with him being that hot about the timeout. I have a real issue with true, him being that true, hot true. about and the timeout. True, true, true. And I agree timeout. with you because it's, it that's is indefens- it's it indefensible. It's indefensible. But in that moment, you have no responsibility to try to teach me anything. Right, and you that's what I'm no, saying. Like, that's not, we don't have any relationship in that way. And people overlook that, and they think it's like, oh, uh, well, you know, like he was supposed to. I don't have to listen to you say anything. Right. I might be wrong. But, but you I don't have to. Exactly There's no right. no rule in right. the NCAA or at Michigan or at Wisconsin that says I have to stand here, let you hold me and talk to me like you need to school me. Right. Correct. 
Correct. Even if I'm wrong. Even, even if, if I'm wrong. wrong. Even if I'm wrong. Especially when I'm trying to walk by. Right. This, That's it, the thing. It doesn't work that he way. He didn't chase him in the tunnel. Right. He didn't come. Like, he tried to walk by. I do believe it's possible, right? And I don't know this, because, mm-hmm. again, I can't see it. I believe it's possible that Greg Gard wasn't trying to teach him as much as he was trying to explain himself, right? Like, yeah, he was... There's I, a time for that. I, and I yeah. I hear you. I just I think it's possible that it wasn't there was no ill intent right. on Greg Gard's part. Sure. It was way more of a look, man, we're gonna be coaching against each other for years. I don't really want there to be beef between us. I just want to talk to you about what happened there so that you and I can be on the same in the same place and we can be all right. I think that's possible. Mm-hmm. I think it's possible that it wasn't I'm looking down upon you or I think you're you're new to this and I need to teach you. I don't think it was necessary that Greg Gard believed he was Mike Shashevsky, who we've seen do this a billion times during the course of his career where he thought he needed to teach somebody on the other team something. I think it's possible, right? I don't you know. Tommy Amaker a valuable lesson recently too, but go ahead. Mm. <laughs> mm. Mm. <laughs> but you don't mm. you're right. And it could have been from the heart with him trying to help, hey, this is what happened, but that's not the time to have that conversation. Right. right. I not, get it. I get it. It's not the and time. It, I mean, cuz the emotions and what and yeah. it's raw. You know, it is. It's very raw. You don't. It's not the time and place for it. And maybe he just didn't understand. I mean, it, good intentions. If coach had good intentions, right. But at that time, it's hard for someone when you locked in like that. It's hard to see anybody's intentions. And if it comes down to where he said something, not the head coach, but the assistant coach said something. I, I think if he wanted to just be violent, he would have been violent when the guy grabbed him at first, but right. he didn't. Right. You know what I mean? So what escalated so what, it? Right. That's right. my And point. again, that ma- I, do, I don't disagree. I think that matters in trying to figure out exactly what happened yeah. and what it means moving forward. Not that I would ever do it. Not that I condone it. Right. You know what I mean? I just want that to be known. Like, I've broken a pair of glasses and three clipboards because the referee called me boy and told me he was going to put me in a boy's place. And I do think there's a big difference between that and if the guy just said, like, get the F out of here or something like that. Those are two different things to me, right? right? Like, if the guy just said, get the F out of here, like, dude, you got it. That's wrong, but it doesn't escalate where you can go over the top. You know, like, that's that's not okay. All right, we'll come back in. We'll wrap up the show. We're already way over time. (laughs) That's the way it is. Mike Francis is here. We're winding down for a Monday edition of Glenn Clark Radio. After being virtual in 2021, the CIAA Men's and Women's Basketball Tournament is headed to Charm City this February 22nd through 26th. The CIAA is an event that has become a celebration of family, culture, and accomplishments that uplift and strengthen the African-American community. See the excitement in person as some of the best college basketball in the country comes to Baltimore's Royal Farms Arena with the CIAA Men's and Women's Conference Tournament. Get your tickets now at CIAA. AATournament.org. That's CIAATournament.org. Sports betting has come to Maryland, and we're ready to help you win some money. Tune in for Simply the Bets with Glenn Clark and Paul Valley every Wednesday morning at 11.30. Vandal Sportsbook GM Bruce Billick and v Aaron Oster join the guys every week to give you all the info you need and even to offer a few winners. So come win some money with us on Simply the Bets every Wednesday at 11.30 a.m. Brought to you by the Vandal Sportsbook at Live Casino and Hotel Maryland. Listen at PressBoxOnline.com slash radio and watch at YouTube.com slash press box online. Glory Days Grill's winter seasonal menu is back with comfort classics like their house-made meatloaf and short rib grilled cheese. It also features the center cut sirloin with grilled shrimp, the char grilled pork tenderloin, grilled meatloaf sandwich, smoky thigh wings with Alabama barbecue sauce, and a Brussels and bacon appetizer. All of these items pair well with Devil's Backbone 8-point IPA or their anniversary IPA brewed by Devil's Backbone. And try their seasonal cocktails, Blood Orange Burger, Bourbon Cider, Apple Ginger Mule, and Captain's Hot Cider. Find out more and get your order in today at glorydaysgrill.com. Great food, good sports. It's another cold winter here in Baltimore, but this time there's no hot stove to warm you up. Hi, I'm Paul Valley, and while there may be no activity in the world of baseball, I'll still be here every week with my co-host Zach Goodman to give you all the latest in the CBA negotiations as teams look to get back on the field in time for spring training. You can watch us live every Saturday from 10 a.m. to noon at YouTube dot com slash press box online or facebook dot com slash press box sports and listen at press box online dot com slash radio so tune in every saturday from 10 a.m to noon for the latest in baseball coverage right here on the battle round 
We can't imagine why you'd want to, but you can watch GCR live. It's at Facebook.com slash Sports and try to guess whether these guys are wearing any pants. If you're not playing underdog fantasy football, you're making a mistake. It is so much fun. Even though football season is over, they still have games for you for basketball. For Well, not for the next couple nights because there's no basketball until Thursday, but hmm. hockey. And if they ever play baseball, you'll be able to play games that way. It, I, I know it's frustrating that we still can't bet on our phones uh, or on the computer here in Maryland, but when you play underdog, you can play player props, parlays, things like that, feel like you're betting the same way underdogfantasy.com and when you use the code pressbox your first deposit up to $100 we will match it with free money for you to play with with underdog fantasy football Mike Francis has been with us in studio all morning these are the things that we typically do at the end of the program let's get a tidbit tidbit is brought to you today by ooh this one's brought to you by Live Casino and Hotel you said you were going to be down there uh, hanging out we love Live Casino and Hotel that's my spot where I like to go I am a big fan of the Asian, the uh, the it's the Thai Asian. Oh God, I gotta make sense. The Thai chili wings. Yeah. That's what it is. Oh my God, yeah. man. Oh, they're out of control. They are Amazing. out of control. Um, Fifty-one self-service kiosks where you get all your bets in, and they're open twenty-four-seven. So if you're into something like if you're a big European soccer fan, and like you want to be there on a Saturday morning and watch the game and make some money, and you're like, well, they don't open it. Don't worry about it. Self-service <laughs> kiosks available at all times, so you can hang out. Right there in the FanDuel Sportsbook. Watch the soccer Saturday morning. Boy, what a, did you see the story about the – did you see what happened in the New Zealand-U.S. women's soccer match yesterday? No, I didn't. The same girl from New Zealand put in three own goals during the game. How does that happen? Whoa. And, like, I watched the highlights. Like, it's not – it's just terribly unfortunate. It's just balls that were played in. She's playing center back, and she's trying to make a play. Three in one match. In one match. Cause I get it. You're, I know what you're thinking. I understand exactly what you're thinking. I'm and thinking, I, I'm 100. Arch this, Schleetster. Yeah, a oh, thousand percent. It's the exact same thought that I have. Of course, former Baltimore Colt, Arch Schleetster. <laughs> I had the exact same thought that you had. And then I'm watching and I'm like, oh no. I'm like, oh, this poor girl just happened to be. And look, New Zealand's not exactly a soccer power, you know, like let's. But, like, she just happened to be in the spot where a cross was coming in, mm. was trying to do something with it. It came off her foot the wrong way. Three times, three times. But anyway, if you're a soccer fan, you want to be there betting Saturday morning. Oh, I can't even imagine. Ugh. I can't. Even, dude, after the third one, she literally just collapsed. Glad and it's I, not Columbia. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh no. Oh, it's we've, a tidbit. <laughs> we've all seen the two Escobars. Um, anyway, how was that a read for Live Casino? Whatever. <laughs> FanDuel Sportsbook, Live Casino Hotel, bet 7 in the morning and don't put in on goals. <laughs> tidbit. What you got? All right, so um, everybody was up in arms when Maryland left the ACC. They they left for the money, and Maryland's a basketball school, and they went to a conference that's not a basketball. Well, the Big Ten is one of the best basketball conferences this in year, the country. It's a, it's a way better basketball conference than the ACC yeah. is. The, the conference has featured at least three NCAA tournament teams every year that there's been a tournament since the 1979-1980 season, topping out at nine last season. They have also featured at least three top 25 teams each of the last 12 seasons, soon to be 13, with five teams currently ranked as we speak. With all the success of the conference, it should be no surprise that the Big Ten has been home to the national champion 10 times and has sported 52 Final yeah, Four squads. But, it, but it's been a long time. Which five universities have combined for the 10 national championships and which one has the most? Okay, so this is a little bit wonky. Right? This is a bit wonky. Be We'll start with the obvious ones. Michigan State, of course. Mm -hmm. They have two. Michigan. They have one. Ohio State. Mm -hmm. Ohio State has one. Indiana. Indiana is number one with five. Yep. And then the question is, are you counting Maryland's national championship as a Big no. Ten championship? That's that's where the question became. No. So because they didn't win it while they were in the Big right. Ten. Right. So mm. the funny thing is I'm actually – I'm guessing it's Purdue, but I don't know that. It's not. It's not Purdue. Who else won a national? Illinois? No. It was Wisconsin. It was and Wisconsin. It was, oh, God. It was early on. You already got them. You already got all five. I know. I'm trying to think of when it was. When was Wisconsin? When was Wisconsin's? Didn't it was, Wisconsin just beat Duke in the, in the championship no, they lost. Like, like in 2017? They literally lost that game. Yeah, they made it to the championship game. They lost that game. Yeah. See, I. Now you're tidbitting me. I didn't. <laughs> I, I, I I feel didn't. like it was early that they won a national championship. Hang on a second. I'll come up with this answer. I'll come up with this answer. Wisconsin 
won a national yeah in 1941 that was when they won the ncaa tournament was in 1941 correct yes they lost to duke in the title game it broke my heart because they had a big win in the in the yes, final yes they beat four. kentucky they kentucky beat was like they, and, yeah. and was that was that ad kentucky was that they beat in the final four that was somebody yes. it was it was some i want to say it was ad mm. it was somebody that was supposed to be completely i think it, i think it was it ad was, i think yeah, it was, yeah, it was i think it was ad all right. Other than that, it was a very good tidbit. <laughs> Other than, than that faux pas, where you reminded me about Duke winning a Nash. Thanks a lot, jerk. I uh, <laughs> really appreciate that. Trying to make it relevant to the show. I understand. Uh, Tubular is brought to you. Speaking of college basketball, Tubular is brought to you by the CIAA tournament, which, again, gets underway tomorrow. You're going to be want to be a part of it. Mike Francis, I'm not asking you to speak on behalf of all black people. <laughs> all right? But for those of us that are uh, that are white, that don't understand how significant the CIAA is in black culture and yeah. why, like, all we hear is, well, it's a Division II basketball tournament. Why are we making that big of a deal out of it? Like, why why is it at a big arena? Like, what, what, what is all that about? Can you explain to people why the CIAA tournament is so significant? Uh, it's like a reunion. I mean, you know, black colleges don't have the money. They don't have the funding. They don't have CBS and everyone behind, <coughs> excuse me, behind excuse me, behind them to be able to be in the limelight as much as the other colleges and uh, other conferences. So this is a celebration of maybe guys who could have played and didn't and mm -hmm. uh, coaches as well on their way up the ladder. But it, it shows uh, it's all about pride. You know, it's big. It's about pride. I have, you know, there's a group of guys in, you know, in our area that, would go together, collect money all year for the trip. Wow. And, you know, vacation. Wow. The CIAA, the Dorsey Road crew, that's what they did. Uh, that's big cool. pop, big feel. They collect, you know, take money, and then they go down, rent like four hotel rooms and stay down for the week because, you know, it's big. It's a it's, party. And it's an acceptance. It's it's We were accepted there before anywhere else. Hmm. You that know, so it, it means a lot. Uh, again, like I said, everybody's trying to find a place to practice and, Guys are calling, trying to find places, and it, it's big for them to be in the limelight, to give us that feel, like that March Madness feel. This is the March Madness feel yep. for the CIAA. Mm -hmm. uh, you got good schools. You got Bowie, yep. you know, who's really good, and they've made a lot of noise in the last 10 years, you know, uh, basketball and football-wise. But, you know, those schools, it's a celebration. It's it's uh, We are so happy to have it here. It's a major event. It's a major moment for our city and for things that we can embrace, and it's going to impact a lot of businesses in the area. Yes. It, it is a big, big deal. Please get behind it, support it. Tickets still available, CIAATournament.org, in order to get yours. Um, tonight, uh, College Hoops, Penn State, Maryland, 7 o'clock on ESPN2. ESPNU, Coppins in action at Howard on TV tonight at 7 o'clock. Of course, Morgan got the big run on, uh, on Saturday. They were on all the networks yes. out in Cleveland. It was great to see that. Morgan's got Norfolk State at home tonight at 7.30. Uh, the rest of the college basketball find at Glenn Clark Radio. Uh, there's one Big Ten game, Indiana, Ohio State, 7 o'clock on FS1. Everything else, glennclarkradio.com. Of course, no NBA tonight because they're off until Thursday. NHL Network cracking Canucks at 10. The USA Network for WWE Raw at 8. That's it for sports-related. Anything non-sports-wise that stands out, Paul? Uh, Joseph Gordon-Levitt's on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert tonight, 1135 on CBS. Uh, ben Stiller is on The Tonight Show with Jimmy Fallon uh, on NBC at 1135. All American uh, at eight o'clock on the CW, and All American Homecoming se season or series premiere uh, at nine, and then American. Dad Have either of you watched Fresh Prince yet? I no, watched the I first episode. See, I did see that. I, I had no. There was like in my mind when I s heard about it. When I, s I was like, nah, there's just I'm not for me. Everyone is raving about mm. it. Everyone is going on. Would you? The the first episode was good. It didn't suck me in, but it 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 did enough that I'm willing to watch another another right. episode or two before All I make right. a decision. Gotta give it three. Yeah, I'll always. Yeah. yeah, I've given up on series after the first two episodes too many times, right. and then come back and end up really enjoying them. So I'm gonna give it three episodes mm -hmm. to see if it really just pulls me in. I've gotten a lot of rave reviews about Fred, which blew my mind. I'm like, everything about this seemed like it was a bad idea to me. Like I'm like, why are we doing this? It is <laughs> in no way, shape, or form a comedy. It's right. It's, it's a right. drama. It's in completely every sense. different. And like the characters are, like I've been told, Carlton is. Utterly and is not at all. The polar opposite. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Completely and totally different. So I'll, I'll look at it. I will give it a look. I'll do that. All right. Uh, Mike Francis, plugs. What else? We, what can we plug for you? The podcast? Yeah, podcast. Also, uh, uh, tomorrow I'll be at uh, the live casino doing a uh, mentorship, starting a mentorship. 
uh, with African American students in uh, in our school in our area. Um, the podcast is doing well. Uh, Francis Sports Academy will be coming to you when we're doing our work in the community and our outreach. You can find me at Coach Franchise at uh, on Twitter, also on Instagram. You can also uh, Francis Sports Academy, same thing. And uh, if you in the area. Come on by, give us a call. Love that, man. We'll do this again for sure. I know that I much. We are that. definitely going to really, do this really again. Do. This is a lot of fun, man. Thank you. All right. Thanks today to Coach Francis. Thanks also today to Bobby Cremens as well as to uh, Rob Long. We'll get all that up in the greatest hit section of the archives. Tab at glennclarkradio.com. Uh, hopefully DJ cool tomorrow. I'm really – I'm, re- I'm going to reach out to him. Oh, him boy. By, by the way, not to interrupt, did you do a stand read? I'm going to talk about it in one second. Oh, gotcha. I got okay. you. I got you. I'm going to talk about it in one second. Anything else tomorrow? Um, not just yet, but there All right, will be. Stuff and things. Stuff and things on the program tomorrow. Hopefully, DJ Cool. Oh, I'm really excited about that. that. Good. Really excited about it. All right. Uh, thanks to everybody at Pressbox, all of our great sponsors and partners, including, of course, Live Casino and Hotel, Glory Days Grill, Royal Farms, CIAA Tournament, Great Eights Memorabilia, Underdog Fantasy Football, Blue Line Canine, your local Toyota dealer, buyatoyota.com. Tonight, as Paul just mentioned, Stan the Fan, Ross Grimsley, they're going to be hanging out with you on Facebook Live, talking some baseball with former Orioles pitcher Mike Torres. You're going to want to make sure you tune in for that 6 o'clock. If you miss it live, you'll be able to see it at that same location or at uh, pressboxonline.com slash video tomorrow. Have a great Monday night. Uh, go Marilyn, Morgan, Coppin, uh, 